Tom, what's all the omnifus about then? Hello and welcome to, to what's all the omnifus about then? Issue 5 or edition 5, stream 5, whatever you want to call it. What else would you rather be doing on a Friday night? Um, even though it's payday for a lot of people, we're here, we're live on YouTube, join in the fun. We're here to discuss pickups, reads, what's coming out, all that fun stuff, everything related to Omnibus, Collected Edition, Deluxe covers, all that, all the stuff that makes us, brings us so much joy. Um, if you watch the show every, every month, you'd know I like to kind of switch around the panel, but different people every month so far. And again, this month we have got similar people from before, but just in a different order. So we've got Martin uh, from Sonic's Comics. Hey, everybody. And we've got Highland G. Hey, guys. And as per usual, all their links uh, are in the description below, as are all the links uh, for everyone who's appeared on the show so far. And anyone new that comes in will be added there as well going forward. So this just, uh, first of all, before we get stuck into the into the chat, Chris is here early. He was 20 minutes early. He says, I'm ready. Entertain me. I hope he's still there and hasn't fallen asleep in the 20 minutes waiting for us to go live. Um, which is a shame too, because just before we went live, we were talking about your favourite subject, you saggy you Jimbo. These guys weren't liking it too much, so uh, but I, I I got its back. Don't worry. No, it's all praise, all good praise. And then Scott is here, and hey. And uh, Scott's done something for me for this stream, and I'll, I'll show you in good time uh, exactly what that is. Um, very, very thankful and appreciative of what he done. Um, so, guys, how are you? He's all keep, keeping well? Yeah, doing well. Plays as a weekend. Oh, yeah. G? I'm generally okay. I, I hurt my shoulder a bit uh, a few weeks ago, so it's a bit off. Can't really do much in my right arm, so I'm I'm not actually making videos right now. My last video go out was my uh, my big kind of haul, and mm -hmm. I had to do that pretty much all with my left arm. And I just kind of went, nah, I can't, I can't until this heals up a bit. So, I I can get by day to day kind of stuff, but I'm literally doing everything left handed, so that's fun. Everything. Anyway, I do see <laughs> <laughs> I do see Highland G is rocking our nerd herd merch, and uh, Scott is obviously watching, and uh, Martin has a has a grape with you. Didn't you say that Martin? You had had issues yeah. with it. Yeah, the, it. Cus the custom merch. <laughs> so yeah, you, if anyone who's watching uh, our streams and watching the community and stuff on Instagram, you'll see some folk have our hoodies and t-shirts, um, but. That is the first sip up hoodie that I've seen. So uh, well done. And uh, me being like one of the, I suppose one of the founders, I haven't got my merch yet. I really should. Oh. Oh. He'll be there. He'll come back in a second. <laughs> But yeah, Scott's done this hoodie for me. It's really cool. As I tried to get as close to, to my kind of channel's colours as possible. So I don't know if you can see, but it's kind of a kind of maroney red type thing. And it's got the, uh, nice. the nerd herder on the, on the back as well. Yeah, I do love to cool. see it. It's a nice touch. But yes, yeah, so you, you guys were all saying it was really, really hot in the hoodies and the various videos you guys were doing. So I was like, I want to get on with a zip. That way, if it gets too hot, I don't have to like pull it off over my head midstream or something. Well, I might hit Scott for another blue hoodie with the zip customize it well it looks like phil's having a few issues at the moment yeah we've lost him we've lost him now. so let's just do what we want with his stream <laughs> <laughs> i'm back easy out <laughs> guys you, you could have just run this with us yourself about me it may have to i was saying to martin before the stream actually this happened when we were backstage that I'm not named the provider, but I've recently given them my 30 days notice. And funny enough, ever since then, my internet has been absolute balls. Um, so I do think they're playing funny buggers with my internet just because I, I'm leaving. But come the 7th of March, I will be up and running with super fast infinity, whatever it's called. So it should be all good. So yeah, sorry, if I, if, I, if I do happen to go, this happens through the stream. Martin already knows. He could, he could take on board and carry on and I'll just pop out and pop back in again we'll roll with the punches yeah but um, for all three people in the chat uh let's keep them entertained as chris has has asked um now usually every every um every stream we always leave like what's coming out at the end 
And I always feel like we have to shoehorn that in. Because we talk so much about the books we've read and we've bought and so on, we're going to do this slightly differently. And we're going to go first of what's coming out. And I have asked the guys to uh, pick their top pick. And then we will go through as well what the other books out that are, uh, sorry, out the rest of this month. Um, Just bear with me here. I thought I had a, uh, I do, I have a little, little banner coming out in March. Let's see what we have. And I mentioned Scott had uh, done something for the show, for something very special, which I'm really happy about, delighted about. And this is it. So just bear with. He's done us a little presentation. How, how does this look? This is this is this is quality, isn't it? It's very cool. Yeah. Nice. The only problem is I, I I've I've taken my second screen off, so I only have one screen. So this is full screen for me. So I can't see you guys. I can't see how good I look at myself on the little corner at the bottom. So just bear with. So I've asked the guys here uh, join me tonight to have their top pick, and they give it their top pick. See Highland G. Watch this. Ooh. He's one for Sonic the Hedgehog. IDW Collection Volume Three. Martin. This one for Savage Aven Avengers. And I have picked Spider-Man versus Venom. So we'll start with Highland G. Do you want to kind of give us uh, a brief kind of overview or? Uh, of this pick, um, and then we'll move on to, to, to Martin. Yeah, basically, um, I, I've really enjoyed the IW Turtles collections, and as opposed to a lot of other collected editions where things are left out because maybe it's a certain run or it's a certain writer or something like that, with the IW collections, they put everything in in chronological order. Um, so if there's any little spin off runs or little one shots, it's always included in things. Um, and I, I say, I enjoyed the Turtles run that much that when I, I stopped that book I think it's like 12 or 13 and that kind of writers stopped their kind of run I wanted to take on something else and I picked up the IW Turtle ones um, sorry the IW uh, Sonic ones so I got this is the second one and I've got the Sonic one which is uh, book one it's a little bit more on the sort of family friendly side so where the turtles is very much a nostalgic thing and most of us are in our sort of 30s now so it's a little bit darker a little bit more kind of steeped in history and stuff like that this doesn't really have that this reads more like a saturday morning cartoon but it's really good fun and there's a lot of lore that kind of builds slowly over time they add a character in maybe one character or two characters in, in a in a hardcover that maybe i didn't know that well so they're not like throwing them at you crazy and it's just something I've I've really, really enjoyed being able to get into the, the Sonic universe because it's not something I've I've read before. So I plan to continue just reading these as they, they kind of come out and I'll, I'll be covering them on my channel as, as I get them as well. So yeah, just something to so look forward to. That says the annual for 2020. Is that how far back they are in, in collecting these in hardcover? Is there, is there trade paperbacks in between, like the single issues and this? Yeah, so I believe they're roughly up to about issue 70 or something in the main run in like, trades. Um, okay. And they're still bringing them out in trades as and when. If you want to buy the the main run in trades, and as I said, like any of the offshoot one, one shots or annuals or things like that separately yourself, which might not be included in the trades. But the great thing with the IW collections as opposed to the trades is that they collect everything. So they might take a little bit longer to come out, but you don't miss anything. Yeah, I take it because with the TMNT stuff, like this, we, we talk about how good the spines are with the kind of katana strap or whatever around it. I take it obviously the spine of this is that their kind of uh grid was it called the flag, whatever. For uh, so you uh, can't really see it on the spine, the spine's just like it's like the hedgehog logo with like a ring in the Let's see if we can get a bit on the camera. The for, it's like a ring at the top for the number, mm -hmm. um, and then the edge of all of them has the kind of checkered flag IDW collection, yeah. Nice. So like they all they all kind of match up the same, you know, kind of that way. There's an ever so slight difference, I think, between one and two in the spine. I like think they lined up the IDW logo or something slightly different, but it's, it's pretty close. I think it's the white the white background on the actual logo. Right. Oh yeah, that's what it is. It's like a thicker surround on the actual, the overall connects on the, the actual, actual bit. Sonic and the hedgehog. Yeah, together. I say nothing 
like it's not like for the turtles book one of the, the black and white ones where you've got like red on one and white on the rest or anything like that it's, you know it's, 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 a, it's a subtle change and most people didn't think that the third book was going to come out um when I, when I was covering the first couple of books for my channel people were like is this an ongoing thing and iw been really quiet about it um but as far as i can tell going forward it's going to be at least one a year and they'll just kind of roll them out like they did the turtles once yeah well the tmnt stuff it's they're still pretty big sellers. Um, I don't imagine this would be. I don't know why I just have that idea in my mind that Sonic wouldn't be that big of an IP as the Turtles would be. Mm. Um, maybe that's why I think that you know they've released the first two. Maybe they thought the sales weren't as good. Should they continue doing it? But like I think we're all in agreement too that IDW they produce some really good hardcovers. Their stuff. The thing, pretty... with, the thing with Sonic though is you got you forget there's like a huge Asian audience on that side of it with the animated shows and yeah. other things that kind of came out around around Sonic. So like never underestimate that kind of manga audience. Like they're the bigger crowd. Yeah, there was a uh, anime came out. On Net was it Netflix? Was it like last year, year before? Sonic um, Prime. What's it called? Sorry. Sonic Prime. And um, it's really good. good, yeah, yeah, really good. They've only given us half a season so far, but I will be going back for more. And then they're on a second movie as well. Oh, yes, mm -hmm. um, folks, like you, you, you would imagine that, that this would be Martin's pick. Um, and I said that the guys I missed them both separately and said, Listen, if he's picked one top pick for the month of March, what's coming out? Um, if it's first come, first serve, so if you name the same book, it's Havers first says it. And Highland G was straight in there with Sonic. I thought that's <laughs> something's not right with that. That should be Martin's pick. But uh, I was like, I was like, I'm going to say this, even though I think Martin's probably going to say it anyway. Yeah, but he's, um, he's on my hit list. This that's not that's not. But have you read them yet, or have you just got them? No, I've got them. I haven't dived into them yet. Um, I yeah. just feel like I've got so much other things I want to read. So it's just it's, 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 it's a it is a lighter read, and as I think it is a bit of a quicker read. Kind of like I say with a lot of the. Sort of the early Usagi stuff, not maybe the later Usagi stuff because it gets a little bit deeper in some of the stories. But like the early Usagi stuff, this is the, there's a lot of like kind of quick palate cleanser type stories where like it's not that they're, they're bad stories by any means, but you're not going to be spending days going into the depth of you know what the story means. You just read it and kind of enjoy. And that's what I wanted really because I think I, I always thought this would be a palate cleanser. So I think when I get a little bit tired of the more serious reads, I might drop back into. Something like this. I think the way you describe it, Jay, like it's like Saturday morning cartoons almost. You know, mm -hmm. it's just it just seems a bit more relaxing. Um, I love I love that kind of stuff. It was a Turtles run that came out recently. It was four um, like a, four issues as a sort of short run, but it's technically four one shots because they just kind of start with an issue that Turtles have to have. Um, usually Splinter ends up out of this, the situation, the Turtles resolve whatever the problem is, and at the end, they're telling Splinter that they've resolved it, and he's like, all right, cool, that's fine. And like it's like the end of an episode of like a, a, a TV show, and one of them is like, they created a, a, um, a VR system, and they go into it, and the VR system goes against them, and then they have to figure out a way to get out of it. So like, you're going through the issue, and they're just playing mini games basically, but the Turtles are in them. And then they resolve it, and it gets to the end, the end of the, the issue. And like I just thought it was, it was great, a little short, one and done, Kind of things i don't have to you know read 20 issues to get into yeah it's not something that's, that's on my radar but i am glad they're producing and i hope they follow through with there'd be, there'd be nothing worse than the collector like if they did stop at a certain point and go well this isn't making us enough money mm. they say there's 70 odd issues can you imagine if they stopped early and they thought no we'll just do trade paperbacks and that's it i think they're but invested because they do release the trades first and then they bundle them together because that's how I knew about this series. I picked up the first two trades thinking that that's all right, this will never get a hardcover. I'll go for the trades. And as soon as I picked them up, the first hardcover was announced. So the first yeah. thing I did was return those trades and pre order the hardcover. Well, they were very good as well, IDW. Was it Transformers? That's theirs, isn't it? That was their, their run. Mm -hmm. So, and they. They brought all them out and obviously the turtles as well so hopefully they they stick to it but um folks i know and the artist people... just quickly uh, one of the artists that does some of the stuff on the sonic stuff is the artist that did the i forget what it was the the puppy story thing recently the horror one that everybody liked oh uh stray dogs stray dogs stray dogs yeah yeah, yeah so they're they're working on the sonic run that's their um stray dogs is number one on the nerd herd leaderboard currently 
So yeah. Um, folks, I know there's some comments in the chat. The problem is I'm not very uh, good technologically. Is the right word? So I only have one screen, and this PowerPoint is full screen, so I can't see the comments currently. I know they're there because it's on the phone beside me. Um, so yes, Scott, it is working. Hello, Fuzzy, and hello, ALB0811. But we'll get to the comments once this is off the full <laughs> screen, so bear with me. Um, Martin, you didn't pick Sonic because you picked this. No, I, I went for something a little bit different than I usually go for. Um, this book jumps out at me for a couple of reasons. As you can see, it's a Marvel team up. Um, and it's a bit of a weird Marvel team up as well. You know, Savage Avengers, as you see, we've got Venom, Conan, mm -hmm. uh, The Punisher, Elektra, Wolverine, and Dr. Voodoo. So it, it seems like I, I, I haven't read any of this personally. I've had a little look at what it's about. It seems as if Conan seems to come into modern day during the Savage Land, and mm -hmm. they're sort of the wizards from his sort of time is giving spells and stuff to the hand. So it's a bit of a mashup story. So I say the cast fits what interested me more. But one of the big things that drew me to picking this, because Marvel have recently lost the license to Conan, mm -hmm. the odds of this getting reprinted are slim to none. So I wanted to bring this to people's attention because if it's something that does interest you, I would nab it while it's available because when it yeah. goes, it might be gone for forever. Yeah, I I, I would echo that. Um, I don't have it in pre-order. It's something that it's not the biggest omnibus, so it's not you're not touching like eighty ninety pound for this. You can get it fairly cheap. I'm hoping for a good uh, books etc. or speedy hand link mm -hmm. uh, to arrive um, probably after a release date, and if it's that would tempt me to buy it. I have read the first few issues of this. Um, I collected it in single issues. Now, I didn't drop it because it was poor. I just dropped it because I had that many stuff on my pull list. Something had to go. And I'm a big Venom fan, so that's why I got this. But it's very, very different than Avengers. Like It's obviously called the Savage Avengers. It is pretty savage. and There was an opening scene. It was pretty bloody. But in a good way, like you know, like a sacrificial kind of way. It was, it was interesting. Um, so yeah, I think you would have a good time reading this. But I agree, like with Conan no longer being part of Marvel, this probably will never get a second uh, reprint. Um, this will be it, I think. So I can imagine if you don't get it now, you'll never get it. Yeah, and the thing is, it's I've, I've looked into the series a bit just on um, online. This does cover the first, the whole first volume. There were only 28 issues in this run, including issue zero. So this is the whole first lot. So if, you, if you're going to get it, I can only assume you're going to get a complete story before it moves on to the next volume. Yeah, yeah. well, that's the thing. I'm not, I could be wrong. I don't think Conan is part of the Savage Avengers of the current run. I don't mm -hmm. think he is. So again, if you are a fan of this, or if you find yourself down the line wanting to buy the second volume, um. This, you know, you'll miss out on this if once it's out of print, it's, it's gone. But um, who writes the current one then, the second volume? Do you know? Oh, I haven't checked. Oh. Well, this is Jerry Duggan and, and Chris Claremont, but I, I'm not too sure how much Chris Claremont is involved in it, really. From what I remember with the single issues, it was Jerry Duggan had written most of it. Um, unless Claremont's written some of the, well, there's obviously Uncanny X Men 1981 uh, materials in there. Um, so maybe he's just part of that as opposed to the actual run itself. I think this They're is two very different writers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the Chris Claremont involvement would be from the Uncanny X Men nineteen eighty one. That's what I'm thinking, yeah. Um, yeah but he, think... he was he was down as the main artist for or main writer for this, so it kinda awesome. made me think if he's if it is like in terms of when I look this up, like if that's the only reason why he's in this for that 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 X Men from uh one nineteen ninety one. That's not enough, I don't think, to warrant getting your name in the book. No. But, I mean, it doesn't have Claremont on the cover. It says Dugan down the bottom left. Yeah. And Mike Diodato Jr. He's the main artist on the book, I think. Wow. Butch Geis, Ron Garney, John Romita Jr. I'm not a, I'm not a fan. But yeah, if this interests you, pick this up. Hopefully we get a good, a good deal, a good price once it comes out in release, and I'll pick it up. But as, as we were saying, I think... Once it goes, it, it goes. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that's, that's the main reason it's uh, interested me. And I think it's something that, um, you know, Marvel must feel confident about because this is a relatively new series. This only wrapped up last year. I think it yep. started in 2019. So, yep. yeah, it's a relatively new one for them to put, put out. So. And that Venom looks quite menacing, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Everyone knows I'm a big Venom fan, which is why I've picked Spider Man versus Venom. Um, it comes out the 7th of March, it's quite early on this month. A um, whole host of writers, whole host of artists. Um, too many to name, uh, to be honest with you, because <laughs> this is one over the over the show. It's one of those ones that's not so much collecting a run of one book. As you can see, it's got Amazing Spider Man, Web of Spider Man. Has a few different uh, limited series, um, maximum carnage is in this, uh, and that is that. That's the only reason why I'm actually get picking up this omnibus, because I think with all their Spider-Man stuff and all their Venom stuff, there's a bit of double dipping in this. Yeah. But because maximum carnage is not collected in a little other oversized format other than this, what's the reason why I'm picking this up? Because. Um, I mean, we read Maximum Carnage for the Nerd Herd, and um, I know the rest of the guys weren't overly fussed on it. They, that was fine for them. But I love that story, and I want to read it again in this format. Um, so I have to have this just to kind of, I don't know, be a Venom completionist, I suppose, really. I'm the same. I'm totally the same. This is why I'm picking it up. It's those Maximum Carnage issues in oversized. It's just, it's going to fill a gap in my Spider Man collection. Yeah. Of Venom collection, so I just, I'm just going to kick myself if I don't pick it up. Gee, would you be a Venom fan? Is this something that would interest you, or did you enjoy? Have you read, or have you, did you enjoy Maximum Carnage? I mean, to be honest, I'm not that invested in Marvel, um, so I don't, I don't kind of follow the bigger kind of events or anything. Um, anything that I've read in Marvel has been more kind of what would have been considered at the time sort of B and C kind of characters within things. So, like within, say, like Wolverine, I wrote, I read X23 and I read the sort of dark Dakin stuff within mm-hmm. sort of spider-man um i've read the scarlet spider which was the cane run not the bit not the um ben riley stuff um and i read the rick remender agent venom run um but i haven't read anything current as far as sort of spider Man's concerned as i said it's really just things that i can read complete without having to yeah. read the the entire universe because i couldn't invest in what are you guys at now like 10 omnibuses that's just mental to me for spider-man yeah 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 well you got the five the five ogs the, the original series and you have obviously the ultimate universe or two or three of the miles. minutes or, yeah, yeah miles morales yeah and so then the venom ones probably touching close to 20 to be honest 20 yes. years <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah so I, I would love a rick remender um like agent venom yeah, yeah. So i'd probably buy that but other than that i'm not really invested um i could be wrong but martin was that was rick remender venom on that um, uh, list of Omars for the reprints. Can you remember? I don't think it was. No, I mean, it's never been I printed as an omnibus. So, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah right. the only the only one on Omar's list is um, Volume One, I think, because that's out of print at the moment. You can still get Volume Two and Three of the Ben Omnibus. So. Yeah. Well, just then a recap of what we've all picked. Island G of Sonic the Hedgehog, the IDW Collection, Volume Three. Martin Sonic's Comics has not one for Sonic, he's one for Savage Avengers and uh, myself, Spider Man versus Venom. But I was always going to pick Venom, really, wasn't I? So, okay, how did that go? Because that's that's all Scott. Scott made that presentation for me, and um, the funny thing is, he's actually um, he, he trusts me to be able to edit this every month myself for the different books. And Martin, you're laughing because you know that's yeah. not, that's not going to happen. <laughs> I will try that's my it. best. Scott's has given you the template in. then. Yeah, but he is offered his services. So if anyone else needs any production work, give Scott Shelf a shout, um, and just he'll give me a treat. So it's all good. It so reminds me of that that older. Um, I want to say it's an Xbox interface, but it used to have that kind of style where it was like all the tabs off to one side or off to the other side, and they just kind of fl- flipped across almost like a book. It's like a book, yeah. That's what's like. Yeah. Really cool. See, it's it's, it's good. It's good, good creative thinking. Um, say, LB zero eight one one. Can't catch it live, fellas. We'll catch it tomorrow. Like the new visuals, looking good. Have a good one. Thanks very much. 
Fuzzy was here. He said, Ethan, I'll give you hope your show goes well. Thanks, Fuzzy. And Chris was admiring the work, the hard production work paying off. It does. Um, Rich is here. said, Ethan and Jens, looking forward to catching up with us over the weekend. And Larry's Library. First time on the show. I'm a fan of Larry's Library. Um, yeah, me too. Yes. Uh, he, his cool. uh, daughter is the comic slayer as well. And they do a great live on stuff as well. He's still on the fence about Savage Avengers. But I think if, if I'm right, he do collect the Conan stuff. If I'm right, he does. So as we discussed, if you don't have this, you may never get it again if Conan goes to wherever it goes to be. Conan's going into Titan and they are reprinting all the main runs, but they won't be able to print anything that's got Marvel or DC in it, obviously. Yeah, that's true. Um, I do like, though, how they've come out and shown their spine designs that are just like the Marvel Omnis. So they're, you know, kudos to Titan. They're, they're trying to make sure our shelves look good still. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dash Long, hashtag Easter eggs. Um, and Scott's just like, say, any work you want him to do, anything at all, he'll do anything for him. I'm sure he'll, he'll think of something. He'll help you out. As, as Chris has mentioned, he needs some plastering and roofing work. If you diversify, Scott, I think Scott will be willing to give it a go. But yeah, um, guys, do you have a haul? Do you have stuff you want to haul? Show us. I've got a couple of things. Of thi yeah, yeah, I've got a couple of things because I did. I said I literally just did my last video was my haul, so I haven't really picked up much since then. But I've got a couple of bits. Has, has that video come out yet? Yeah. Was it today? No, no, last week. Oh, okay. No, that's last what, week was that... my was my big haul video and i said i didn't bring out anything on on sunday because i i don't have any more back catalog to to bring out and so no i just meant i didn't want to, i would have felt bad if i asked you to share your haul here if your video wasn't out yet but if it was one from last week then we'll see it but we won't see it again yeah. so this segment i'm going to call hauling it just because it sounds good um highland do you want to show us off what you've picked up so far this month or in the last month um, so yes, I've just got a couple of things that I've, I've picked up here. See, I don't have all the stuff that was in my, my kind of haul, but I just thought some of this was kind of cool. So I've been picking up um, some older hardcovers and different runs of things that I thought was quite cool. And one of the ones that I was picking up was called Titan Mouse of Might. And if you haven't heard of that, it's basically a mouse as Batman. And um, it, it's like two sort of small hardcovers done by this sort of independent guy. Um, and... I got the first one a while ago and I was trying to get the second one and actually now it's kind of weirdly gone up in price, like it's been reprinted at a higher price rate or something like that. But they released two single issues recently, which I'm not sure if they're new issues or if they're like facsimiles of the first issues that ever came out. But I just thought the cover was like really, really cool. So it's a, it's, a, it's, it's Titan, House of Might, it's, it's Blood Moon Comics and it's this mouse as Batman and it's a black and white comic inside. It just looks badass. It does. That like it's cool. yeah. It's strange to see like Batman's Kyle on a mouse, but it does look really cool. Yeah. I it's like, like it. Mighty Mouse meets Batman. Like it's yeah. just yeah. It's really cool. So yeah, so say I'm gonna get the second issue of that as well. I say I don't know if these are facsimiles or if this is actually a continuation beyond the two sort of hardcovers. But it's just something that really kind of caught my eye. I was going down a little bit of a random mouse rabbit hole for a while where I bought um uh, like mouse templar and a couple of other like similar named things just to kind of tr try them out um and then i stumbled across this and i was like well i've got to give that a go because it's, it's batman so yeah and then um see i picked up a couple of other trades recently i've been trying to get any of the the trades that go along the sort of era of sort of the original young justice run sort of um Chuck Dixon's Nightwing, stuff like that. And there's a few runs that I just haven't got my hands on yet. So I've got them all on a wish list and I've just been picking them up whenever they go roughly about £14 or less um, sort of on Amazon. So this is the book three of, of Supergirl. I picked up book one for a, a fiver on um, mm -hmm. Zavi. So that's one in three. So I need to get, um, I think it's two and four because I've only done four of them so far. Um, and then I got the, the first book of Superboy as well. I don't know if they've done any more of these. A lot of these didn't get like their full runs printed, but it's the only way you can really pick them up. So even if I can only get part of the runs, I still want to read this stuff because it's that really fun, un-sort of filtered DC back in the day when these guys really got to let loose. And mm -hmm. it's just, yeah, it's, it's a good fun time. 
Yeah, well, Supergirl by Peter David, that's something I would hope would get like an oversized uh, omnibus, but the way DC do things, I, I cannot see that happening anytime well, I mean, soon. The, the main Supergirl run is like the most popular kind of run they've done all sorts of weird stuff with because the, it basically started in Batman Superman mm-hmm. and it was like issues 8 to 13 or something. That's like Kara's origin story when she appears like as Kara for the first time kind of thing. Um, and they collected that in the omnibus of those runs, but they also collected it in an absolute as part of that run. And I believe there's now a artist edition coming out with, I forget who it is that does the artist books. It's a different publisher, like Dark Horse or something does them. Um, but it's like the the actual, um, I think it's like Tim Sale art edition or whatever, the guy who drew it, I forget who it was that drew it. Um, like it's a separate thing, but it's never been collected with the rest of the Supergirl run. Like, so I've got the the larger trades like this sort of style for the the main sort of Supergirl run. It's like, again, five, maybe six trades um, along like that. And then, you know, I'm going to need to get like an absolute or something for just that first four or five issues that actually introduces it rather than it being like one complete thing. So I've, I've been holding off forever because I'm hoping that, as you say, like these things should get, you know, omnibuses. But then there's so many runs that I've just been like, why has this never had an omnibus? Like the red, the red daughter, like New Fifty Two Supergirl run was like as big as Wonder Woman, and it never got anything beyond trades. No, was the awesome. Red Lanterns run completely ignored. Yep. Um, the the um. I don't think of the other stuff, the, the, the Green Lantern stuff, um, just, it's, just like, it's, a, it's a whole bunch of stuff that just like in, in those eras and, and things that have just never had and you're just like, it doesn't make sense because if there's something against the writer or something like that, they weren't going to publish that writer's work, then you'd be like, okay, fair enough. But then you look at things like No Man's Land, which is like 99% like um, head ran by Chuck Dixon and they've got three omnibuses of that but they've never released his Nightwing run. Mm-hmm. And it's sense. like, that's his biggest run. Instead, they did, um, what was it, Kyle's run of Nightwing and the Grayson stuff um, as the first ever Nightwing omnibus, which was just really strange. It's cashing on the new 52, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, that's but they did, did the it. year one and the stuff that was Chuck Dixon's like, stuff as an oversized hardcover. They've just never done his actual run. That's sort of print that year one, isn't it? You can't get that anymore, sure you can't. Yeah, they did yeah, them in weird bursts. Like they did them as like a trade, and then they did year one of I think it was Robin and Batgirl together as a slightly thicker trade. And then a few years ago now they did each of them as oversized hardcovers. I got I remember I got them for Christmas, um bought for me. Um and then yeah, they just never reprinted them. They weren't like in a full production one, it was just like a small burst. The Nightwing one is one of my biggest grails. I jumped on those when I picked up Batgirl and Robin. Batgirl being the one that was the harder one to get than the Robin one, but Nightwing, yeah. I, I can't get that anywhere. I mean, the Batgirl really... and Robin ones you kind of want together because they're kind of the same story, like they connect up. But mm-hmm. the Nightwing one, as a Nightwing fan, I just had to had to have as, as even though it is its own kind of separate story. I thought you had the Nightwing one, Martin. Did you get the second one? The, the... no, I've I've, I've got. The uh, Prince of Gotham New Fifty Two one, and I've got the Grayson Omnibus. The, the Grayson, that's that's the second the f- half, isn't it? Yeah, that's the second half of the New Fifty Two run. Should we just yeah, we put it down to that, even though it's yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, um, but but the way Nightwing that, came like, came out was Nightwing con- converted into Nightwing during Teen Titans, hmm. and then he started his own run with Chuck Dixon, did the full run of that, and then at the end of that run as like uh, they asked him to come back type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, someone else had taken over at the end of his run and basically burnt Blunt, Bloodhaven to the ground. So there was nothing for him to come back to. So rather than him being able to continue his run, he wrote a year one after the fact um, as a kind of an extra thing for them for, for Nightwing. Um, so the year one's like almost a retrospective more than a complete written before his run kind of thing, which is also, which makes it quite cool. Um, but yeah, those two things were like the origin of Nightwing getting his own runs. And then they kind of butchered it for a bit um, before it got 
picked up again at new 52. I like to think we are going to see a change though with DC. I think seeing that we're getting Green Lantern Corp Volume One, it yeah. was coming out at the end of the year, it gives me hope. Um, especially that after Tomasi sort of on Twitter came out and um, said that it's going to go right the way through to his Green Lantern Corp um, New Fifty Two run as well. So we're going to get that whole era pre New Fifty Two. Right the way up, and it'll just go alongside your Green Lantern ones from Johns. Yeah, Jeff Johns. Yeah, the thing with DC in general, like I think now, we're all fans of Omar, but or we'll watch at least we know who Omar is. But I think he said recently he's spoken with someone from DC, and they all this rumor where they're kind of giving up in the collected edition game, the hardcover, they're not really interested in it is nonsense. Like they are very much looking t- towards doing that. So there are, there are so many DC books, like we refer to Supergirl and obviously the Nightwing, that need over, not even like only oh, just oversized deluxe editions or something something good that we could you know showcase the art. So hopefully they do up that up their game. I mean, it's one of those ones we've discussed it before. Maybe DC just aren't doing enough, whereas Marvel are just doing too much. Just give us a good, happy medium, nice in between. It's weird because DC's omnibuses are, are generally, I mean, a little bit heavily glued, but really well built in in yeah. general compared to like most other kind of companies' bigger books. Um, but they just they don't seem to do that many of them, and even their deluxes nowadays are a bit hit and miss with their binding and a bit heavily glued and stuff. Um, the amount of books people have had recently that have been like like stuck down deluxe editions and stuff that have just been like, what what are they playing at? Yeah, it's a bit of a cheap. Scott is asking for more Flash, and normally I would go, oh no, not a chance, but Scott has got me into reading and loving The Flash, uh, certainly the current uh, run by Jeremy Adams. Um, is that your haul, G? Is that, is that you for now? That's, or? Yeah, that's, that's, the sort of th- that's the three books that I've got here just now, and it's like everything else that I, I picked up was in my kind of video, but the things I can remember was like the big monstrous book, mm. um, sort of volume two. Um, and the metal omnibus, a um, couple other things like that. Yeah, uh, Larry is saying DC is p- pissing everyone off late uh, with all the standard sized hardcovers, and that like, yes, one hundred percent. Like, for, uh, what's the current? Is it Batman for Superman? I don't know what's what is it? World's finest. World's finest. Yeah, like I really want to read that, but I don't want a standard hardcover. I'd rather have a trade paperback over a standard size hardcover it's when they're doing it with short runs as well it's just like it yeah. just feels so weird like the is it like the dark knight steel or something is only supposed to be like 10 issues but they've released it as two standard size hardcovers like yes what? and like the like, like task zombie said or if it's called and the other kind of vampire one like again two six issue standard size hardcovers and they did two or three like random like two and a half three issue trades as well at one point just to get people to sample stuff like it was really random and DC versus Vampires as well. That's another one. I've got volume one. And that's going to come in volume two. So you just hold off and give me, yeah. if it's a 12 issue run, oh, yeah. just hold off. Give me a deluxe edition. I will pay for the deluxe edition. You know, and then I waited to get the to get the deluxe edition of the Sean Murphy book. I forget what it was, The White Knight. And then they've glued down just... the fucking spine. Yes, you're right. Yeah. I guess and that just... really annoyed the hell out of me. Like, yeah. <laughs> but even the White Knight, the White Knight came out first. Well, the collected edition was paperback first, and then a hardcover, and then a deluxe hardcover. And then they're doing the same of each subsequent vo- volume. I just think give us the oversized cover first, get there, yeah. those collectors, and then go down the way as opposed to going up the way. Yeah, I mean, that's how a bookshop would do it. They would bring out the deluxe edition for the for the fans who actually want the book. You buy it at a much higher price in the deluxe hardcover version, and then the mass market trade paperback, hence the name trade paperback, mm-hmm. comes out down the line. That That's, I mean, my girlfriend gets annoyed that way around because she only reads a lot of the novels she buys in paperback, and she has yeah. to wait three to six months after every hardcover comes out to get the paperback. But the thing is, like, once you get to that stage where there's no longer any hardcovers, and it's just the trade paperbacks, that's what you keep in circulation. Like, 10 yeah. years down the line, that's people want to read, they're there to read. The hardcover's done and gone. The collectors have got it. Um, maybe we're just being... But then that becomes a problem for people like Brubaker because people who become fans down the line then want the hardcovers again, and he's like, "I'm on to paperbacks. I'm done with the hardcovers." Yeah, he says that, but yeah, he he'll release. And then the he has to again. he has yeah. to reprint them because of sheer demand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm one of them. 
You better put a print lobby <laughs> key. I need that on my shelf. What, and Krill Summer, Krill Summer is the other one you need as well, isn't it? But if oh, he had his, one, if he had his way, it would be straight to hardcover, and then once the third hardcover run sells out, paperback, and that's it. You wouldn't do singles, and wouldn't do the hardcover again. It would just be a one-off. And that killer be kill thing is quite annoying too, because it looked like it was coming for so long, and then it didn't, and then it was again, and it's not, and it's not obviously not out, so. Who knows if we're ever getting that? I don't think these can. Nobody's confirmed either way, should they haven't. There's been a few <laughs> books floating around like that, like the TMNT Batman omnibus and stuff, where like their release dates seem to just be floating around for some reason. Well, the TMNT Batman stuff. Now? Sorry, what's it sitting at now? Like, is it when's the? You said TMNT Batman. Like that's. Changed. I think it's. I think it's got a firm date again now, but there's October, nothing saying that's not going to change. Is it October? Because it it was up and it had no date and then it got a date and everybody got really excited and then it went into the Amazon kind of like you know 2099 thing where it says for a while and yeah. then it got a date again but it's never not been solicited it's just moved around a lot it was cancelled when it first came out me two years ago because I I had a pre order it never left Amazon month. though even though it was yeah. supposedly cancelled that's so that's something so they they say did cancel or. They announced yeah. it wasn't being printed or wasn't being cut, wasn't coming out, and um, that was like December twenty twenty. I think it was that just was not long ages after. Ago. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I think they put the reason down to the whole pandemic paper shortage thing. Like, listen, we need to be picky on our books for printing here, so they cancelled that. And I was gutted because I was looking forward to it. And but yeah, I think it's been solicited now for another at least another well, going on a year since we found out about it again, but it hasn't come out to get a date there um, well, my, up, that, my, up, my my records I've got it down as August August take that so, with a pinch of salt I suppose really we just don't know until we yeah. see it in our hands we do not know it will move again I'm trying to keep an ongoing record of things that are coming out even stuff I don't buy just so that when we have these discussions I've got something to refer to so. yeah nice yeah. and uh, another book kind of like that which is in DC and we were talking about this today Martin is a spider Geddon. like yeah. it, came, it came out last week but you can't get it anywhere online at the minute it came out is it this week like the, the past week it's come out is that right it's, it's well i don't know I, I went to london last week and uh it was there i had it in my hands but it was sort of way overpriced way oh, overpriced yeah. it was pretty near near cover price and i, and I wasn't paying that yeah. so uh, but there's I'm nowhere else off. there's nowhere else online that we could find it even even amazon don't have it and no. I just think it's going to be one of those books. It's going to be stupidly annoying to buy. It's going to go out of print really quick, and it will be on Omar's list next year for free print probably because people would miss out on it. <laughs> and I reckon it will be. Yeah, because I, I I want to read like the Spider Gwen stuff and all too. So like I feel like I need this Spider Geddon before I read all that. And I don't have a pre-order. That's that maybe that's the importance of pre-ordering books, I suppose, really. But um, with Spider Man especially, I always find pre-orders quite expensive. But yet, once it's actually released, you can pick it up a lot cheaper. Yeah, I, I was going to get the Spider Gwen one, and I held off on it for that reason, thinking that they're probably going to have a bit of backstock, um, and it yeah. might it might come down a little bit. Um, I noticed the cover it. changed slightly as well. The the covers that they had had her picture with like a white border around it, and now it's a picture with a black border around it. Do you mean the Gwenpool book? Is it or is it? Uh, yeah, the Gwenpool one. Yeah, Gwenpool. yeah, it's changed. Yeah, I went for with Spider Gwen. I had to get it on pre-order because I could not buy it if I didn't get the three hundred, like the issue three hundred exclusive DM variant. Yeah, it's yeah. Nice. so yes, I had to get that. But See, it's so diff again, now he's flipping the covers all the time. Like sometimes it's again, I kind of, I kind of wait until something comes out to make sure you actually buy the covers you want and not like some random. It's got to that stage, isn't it? You've got to hold yeah. on. And this is why you know I watch Omar's channel a lot because he will update you first if it's going to change or anything like that or I'll wait for him to show us or even uh organic price books i check out uh, when yeah. they should do their little yeah. overviews just to get an idea of what you know what we're getting so that I, as well with, with um near mint conditions videos like even not like like all the announcements and whatever else he has the books on his calax like facing forward and you, so you know that that's coming soon. It must be soon. Yeah. It's sitting there. He's reviewed it. It's ready to go. But he doesn't talk about them, obviously. But you know, at some point, you're going to have that video. So you, that's why I look forward to as well. And you see those in the hidden in the back. It's Easter eggs. You see them hidden in the background, and you know that is coming soon enough. Um, G Larry would like to ask you a question. 
Is that a gonna, Secret Labs chair? And are you happy with it? Yes, it is. I don't know if you can see it on here. It's all matted out. But um, yeah, I, I, it is a Secret Labs chair. I went through so many different chairs for different kind of reasons because I was kind of working from home and stuff like that as well. Um, and um, never really wanted a gaming chair, to be honest. I backed a thing on Kickstarter that had like a like a spring back support and all this kind of stuff, but um, it ended up falling through and I managed to get my money back and I basically used a chair to, to kind of get. So I got this, it's, it's kind of like a frosted black, which is quite nice because it means that if you get any dust or dirt on it, you don't really see it. Um, but it, they don't do like five different options now. It's basically one chair, but three sizes. Um, I went for the middle one. I actually regret buying the larger size, like buy your size, don't buy bigger than you. It's more comfortable if you get it to your actual size because the shoulder parts and stuff like sit where you're supposed to be. Um, but it's got lumbar support built in, all the stuff kind of adjusts. The only kind of thing I don't really like too much is the, the handle kind of rails are a little bit wobbly. Um, but yeah, generally I got it in a Black Friday. I got like 80 quid off it or something. Good. Yeah. So, if you, so if you're kind of unsure, um, as I said, like make sure you get your size correct. But other than that, they've been really good. And I had the, the lumbar supports built into this one and it got creaky. Um, and they sent me out a replacement back and then collected my old one. So I didn't have to be without the back of the chair. So they were really wow. good. It's good customer service. That's what you want. I've, I've seen like the character, um, like there's the Batman, there's like the Joker ones. Mm. They look really cool. Like there, there's no question. They look fun. Like I think well, they actually, actually do replaceable um, back covers now. So you can oh, buy yeah. the covers you want and take them off if you get bored of them. Oh, because it's not the, the cheapest one I, thing to do, but yeah, it's cheaper than buying a new chair. The, the other one I liked was when it, before the Cyberpunk game came out, and they had like the mm. yellow chair. So that looks yeah. so cool. I want to get that. But I think again, like, yours is black, mine's black, Martin's is black. And you're in street. I think the yellow chair would look a bit silly after a while. Yeah, Comic Bound's got the Batman one. He's Batman got the leather Batman does. one. So they've done like specific character ones that was like leather. So they've done a Batman one that was all black with the black Batman insignia on the, yeah. on the back of it. And um, they had a flash one that was all red leather. And I forget if it was a Superman one or something as well. I think it was like a dark blue leather. Yeah. Um, like a, but a but I got trip. the, as I said, it's like a, a meshy plush type material. So it's more breathable. And that way, like if it's hot or cold, it, it doesn't like, you know, make you sit in a freezing cold chair. Um, yes. And the, the main kind of various support bits and stuff have like gels and stuff from the, for cooling anyway. So like the pillow, if you use it, has like, cooling gel in it and the the main seat bar does as well so yeah um, i said i thought it was really good for for the money i paid but i got like 80 quid off of it because i got it in a black friday yeah i think something like a big purchase like that i would always wait for good friday or a summer <laughs> yeah. sale or just some random discount code or something definitely because um, they're quite pricey i think i mean you're talking 200 yeah. plus again the bigger sizes to go up it's an extra 100 pound yeah exactly and the, and the more things you add or tweak the more it's going to cost like i got the um the lumbar pillow because i've had back issues before so it's got that was like an extra maybe 50 quid or something for the, the lumbar pillows and an extra thing um, and you, you can get gel kind of arm support so these like magnetically um, come off and you can put like gel ones on so that they're like cooling on your arms like other little bits and pieces but again this is how much you want to pay do you want to pay 600 pound or do you want to pay 300 pounds you know like yeah. Um, yeah. So that's our next our next show. Uh, what's all the gaming chair about? <laughs> gaming chairs. <laughs> that's coming next week. Um, Martin, yeah, do you want to show? Interested. Do you want to show us off some of your? Uh, yeah, models? I've got I've got a couple of bits, but I, I won't. I'll try and go quick because usually it takes about forty five minutes for me to go through my stuff. So I've only got yeah. four. So first of all, I've got the once in future deluxe. Nice. So yes, better that better angle. Nice. This was a struggle for me to get in decent condition. I don't know if anyone follows me on Instagram. I made a few comments about it on there. I ordered it from a certain company I won't name, um, and I got damage after damage after damage. This was the fourth copy that I got that was eventually not damaged. So it slip case was dented. The slip, well, on the first one I got, the slip case was dented, and the book inside on the spine was dented. Mm -hmm. oh, that bad. I checked the book inside on this one. No, no, but no, no marks at all on this whatsoever is. So I haven't opened it. Up it's just because sometimes with the newer boom books, when you when you first open them, like the glue's not like it doesn't break, but it's not like the best glue between the ribbon and the the body. So like it's just worth checking because you might have to put just a little bit of glue in before you read it the first time if it comes off a little bit. 
I'll check that because I've got some glue. So yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll That's, there's nothing do major that. doesn't crack the book up or anything if you catch it. And you'll be open on that soon enough because once in future volume three will be coming to the book club uh, at some yes. point relatively soon. So yeah. if you haven't read one, one and two, they're all. Because you must be due another hardcover at some point for that. Yeah, well, they're, they finished the series. They're, they must be close to it, at least if they haven't already finished it. So very close. If, if yeah. Very close. if not finished, as far as yeah. I know. So well, so the, the one I'm hoping for next is, is Seven Secrets, but they yeah. haven't released the last trade yet. Like I think the last trade is due to come out in like a few weeks. I think it's so out once already. that's out, is it? I think Volume Three is out. Cause, uh, could be wrong, but I think there's someone on Instagram. I think got it recently. Don't don't you if you guys follow Sam okay. Taylor? I think he posted it up. Could be because I was looking wrong. into it and I, and I was like, oh well, they're not going to release the hardcover until the final trade's out. But if yeah. the final trades out, then they can they can kind of look at I'm it. hoping that comes this year. Um seven six seven six was great. I have a lot of, I have all the singles plus a few of the variants and stuff. Um I haven't read the whole thing because I, I kind of stopped reading it because I wanted to read it in oversized deluxe format. So hopefully I can that see comes Boom doing a Kickstarter with slipcases oh, with each of the seven logos on them and you choose which one you want in your tier. How many issues are in Seven Secrets Run? 18. So it will come. Yeah, it'll come like that. Like this. It'll be one hardcover. It'll yeah, be one complete. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. But they could it's totally cool. make it a briefcase. But as 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 G said, you'll have to buy seven of them if you're a completionist. You have yeah, seven last thing. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to buy. All, you'd have to buy seven copies. Yeah, <laughs> to get the seven uh, logos. Uh, or get Chris. Uh, get um. Sorry, Scott's uh. 3D three D print. Three D file. You, yeah, yeah you, file. you could do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Martin? Other books, another book I got. She Hulk by Dan Slot Omnibus. Nice. I don't know why it's She Hulk is like a guilty pleasure for me. I just like reading some of the She Hulk stuff, so I pretty much grab anything She Hulk. There's a lot more omnibuses coming up, like of She Hulk and Hulk. So mm. I've, I've got everything that's out so far. So yeah. I'm just hoping that we're going to get the Charles Soul stuff soon. And then we haven't got much more of our solo runs, except for the new one. I, I haven't read any of the She-Hulk stuff, to be honest, but um, She-Hulk was a pretty prominent member of the latest Avengers uh, lineup, and I really liked her in it. And that made me a She-Hulk fan, even though it wasn't her own solo book. So that's something I'm looking to get into. Um, the dance slot, when I actually had that order, when it first came out, uh, was it like two years ago or something, the first print of that came out? And I was like, in Amazon France, had it for like 30-something euros. Wow. And I bought it, but it never arrived. And I just, I just kept the order open for so long. And it was only about three or four months ago they actually finally emailed to say that you, you're not getting that. It's, you know, <laughs> there's no stock, or else you're not that price, whatever it was. And uh, so that was obviously cancelled for me. But it was like thirty something odd euros, which is a ridiculous price. But that never came through. Too good to be true. Um, I used to do that just to get random Amazons from different countries and yeah. see what prices you could find. France and Germany, they, they, they do they, they, they do cheap books quite often, and uh, you know obviously you need to look for the English uh, English language books. But um, of course, Nigel, you, you can you, you can read the German ones, Nigel, can't you? Well, slowly, it's, slowly, it's, I'm yeah. trying. I'm I'm, I'm one book in. Um, Martin, Chris is, like it. is it a guilty pleasure because you are a perk for green women, blue animals, green women? That's the it's rumors an, anyway. It's an added perk. Should we just yeah. say that? <laughs> <laughs> But I'll move on to the next one. Yes, please. Oh, yes. Dead or by Frank Miller. Finally, something I've been after for a very long time. So, went for the DM. Yeah. Could not go, not go for the DM. Nice. Just disappointed with the spine. Why oh, did the they go back to this spine? It's hideous. Absolutely hideous. Yeah. But it's also it's iconically his spine. Yeah, that, that is true. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just as long as they stick to the compendium and do the same with the compendium, so it looks mm. okay on my shelf, I'll be happy. Yeah, okay. yeah, because between those ones and the Electro one, they all had that like really bold looking spines. Mm. Like, love them or hate them. Yeah, the Electro one too. That's something. The Dare, dang, Daredevils, like I know, obviously, uh, gee, you were asked that question before, hey, or Nightwing or Daredevil, and I personally think Daredevil myself. I 
it's so many good runs that like you could literally get them all and you wouldn't really dis- well, er, er, ever since Frank Miller you could get them all and not be disappointed and you know that's that's the word of the street anyway um I also picked that up which I can now remove from my haul because we've already shown it and uh, I'm hoping for the companion to be reprinted and the Electra one that you mentioned G as well by Frank Miller and is it Sinkovich mm-hmm. Sinkovich the artist in that I think you can still get that still yeah. available is it? Yeah, it's currently on Amazon. Cheap? Mm, not cheap, but <laughs> it's something I'm <laughs> stalking at the moment. It drops down to a price I'm willing to pay. Um, See, I Chris... enjoy Daredevil. I just don't come back to it. Like I've I've read maybe three or four different Daredevil omnibus that I've owned, and I've I've sold them all on because, like, while I've enjoyed the runs, I just don't see that rereadability out of it for me. Um, oh. So. You know, as you said, there's no bad run, but there's not necessarily every run is a gold mine either. Um, and where Nightwing might have some absolute stinkers, the ones that I enjoy, I come back to, and I think that's maybe the difference. Yeah. Um, look, I like Nightwing too, and in terms of rereadability, I don't think I've really read anything apart from like Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> um, I'm one of the few people that's actually read most of what's on my shelf. Uh, oh, flip. What's that like? Because like, <laughs> very few people. <laughs> All right, Chris is saying he uh, loves that that such a divine, defining run, and he has a video waiting, so we will stay tuned for that. Is that your last awesome. one, Martin? Last one is a bit strange. Uh, I've never been shy Doctor, about the fact I love Doctor you know, Strange. No, no. Yeah. I like sort of dystopian futures or you know, or like cyberpunk type stories. Um, the little thing that I've been collecting for a while now, Judge Dread. I don't know why. I just okay. The, it's, it's the universe really does. This is this is volume seventeen of the complete case files. You might be able to see here. Mm-hmm. I have more. I have the one to seventeen now. Um, so I will be collecting them. They got to forty one at the moment. We're, we're I picked up now. the Dread stuff on Humble Bundle as a digital thing like, ages ago, but just it was so intimidating, the sheer volume of like mm. stuff that I got, because I got the case files, as you said, but then there's also like the different um, judges. So there's like Judge Dread yeah. stories, Judge, I forget, there's two or three other judges' stories, and like Judge Anderson, some other bits. Judge and, Death. Yeah, and, and, and then there's like the cyber Tokyo type stuff as well, um, mm-hmm. and I was and, and I was just like, yeah, this is quite a lot to get into. It looks fun, but I just I love I this sort of stuff. The jump artwork. into it. Yeah, oh, it was really nice. It, in this sort yeah. of era now, I think from volume eleven, um, it moves into color. So you've got black and white mm-hmm. for the first ten, and then we're moving into the color area here and now. But saying I'm desperate to sort of sit back and read when I get a chance because I say I love that sort of. I saw 2000 AD type stuff, not not things that get read that often or shown off that often, so it's quite cool to see. Yeah. Did you say there was 40, 40 odd of those volumes? 41 at the moment, 42 maybe. And they're still releasing them. They're still, they're still bringing them out. And I even, volume 22 and 23 are currently out of print. And I messaged 2000 AD about it the other day, and they have confirmed that they are going to be reprinted. I think this these runs are evergreen. They, they, okay. they keep them going. So... If you like that sort of thing, gotta pick them up. Now, Judge Dredd is one of those ones that, um, again, I haven't read myself, but I always think it looks cool. Like, it, it looks like it should be a good read. Um, mm. But, like, it's just, it just what puts me off, Judge Dredd. And I don't want to be, like, ageist. But I know a lot of my like, my older friends would have read, like, the probes that they're called. Like, the probes that they were called. Yeah, that's what these are. That's yeah. what these are, the, the frogs. Pro, yes, yeah, so they're not, like, they're not even are they like proper say proper comics like what way is the format of the book is it like is you know what i'm trying to say yeah it... well these 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 are a collection of the progs so they might love you guys see it on thing but above that they say it's the collection of the progs yeah yeah, yeah um, okay so what is a prog <laughs> what is it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing i haven't looked into i just uh i like the artwork like I, I, I like the universe so i thought that's probably the easiest way to get into judge dread yeah, so that's the angle I've gone for. I haven't gone any further than that at the moment. Are they oversized? Think... No, no, they're just they're they're fat trades. They trade height, but they're just a little bit wider. Okay, I think a lot of the 2000 ID stuff came out like in a 2000 ID magazine, so it would have all been like 
um, an anthology type thing. So you'd have like say ten books that you're getting like part of an issue in 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 like a magazine, and then later on they would collect it as whatever things kind of worked and things that didn't work would get dropped out and newer things would get pulled in. And you'd get so it's like, not you know, it's not like a like the kind of traditional comic book issues one to such and such. It's the same. Like it is in terms of like the volume of a story, but not in the same way. Like a single. Yes, issue yes. Comic. It's more like chapters um, yes. than the yeah. issues, and they would have been. I said they wouldn't have been released as separate issues. They would have been released as part of a yeah. anthology magazine that has other stories going on in it at the same time. Because I have read the first like twenty five percent of the first volume, um, and it's very much short stories, but where he featured in a two thousand AD book, so. Mm. It, I haven't went any further than that, so I don't know by this point if we're getting full sort of story runs, but I know we're getting arcs because when you actually look into the books, they give you story arcs. Yeah, I mean, the bigger it got, they did then start releasing their own separate stuff. And this mm. is where 2008 is almost like a starting platform to see if things kind of take off. And sometimes you get some really interesting, like Vertigo-esque kind of style books that just become like a graphic novel and never go anywhere else. And then you get other stuff like Judge Dredd that just blows up into its own kind of thing and then kind of stands alone by itself after that so as you said like started out in black and white started out as like shorts and then it kind of builds into longer stories more color more judges spin-offs you know so on and so forth as it as it kind of goes um and you can buy those kind of collected editions like you know like super thick almost like omnibus ones of them as well see i've been looking just i've been looking down the front here at the um at the comments on this particular volume the actual main writer on it is Garth Ennis, mm -hmm. a known name. And one of the actual artists on this particular book is Sean Phillips. Oh. So, nice. didn't know that before, but it looks like a lot of people that we know is not like unknowns that have written these books. Well, a lot of the kind of British invasion, wasn't it? That was all, they all came from 2080, like obviously Garth Ennis. Um, uh, the, what's the Watchmen artist, Dave? Dave Gibbon? Is it Dave? Well, he, he came from 2000 AD, I'm pretty certain yeah. as well. Um, but yeah. Um, Red Wright, Straw Hat, formerly SCC Comics, um, St. Ethan Trellis. Um, yeah, so is that, is that your at your haul? That's or my haul. I've, I've, I've had a bit of a quiet month. Majority of the stuff that I've pre-ordered or been waiting for is been knocked back a few weeks it's going to be falling into marches um luckily for me i didn't have much pre-ordered uh for february either but it it was my birthday i turned 24 <laughs> during february so uh yeah 24 it's hard like uh, uh so i had quite a few books on, on my wish list and i finally picked them up so i've got 10 here but i'll go through them quite quickly um the first one um is Mouse, mall, mo how's that pronounced? Mouse. Nice. Again, yeah. I know yeah. nothing about this other than the fact that it's a controversial book. It obviously depicts, you know, Nazis and World War Two and the concentration camps, but in like mouse characters, um, I feel like it's something you can have to read because the, the teachers in schools and all, like it's it's quite a quite a you know it's a a Pulitzer Prize winner. Um, so yeah, that's something I felt like. I needed to yeah i think it was like written based on like his dad's experiences or something um and then they used the animals as a way to like depict the different peoples so there's like mice for one thing cats for other things and kind of so on depending yeah. on what what race or group you're in kind of thing i, I can imagine um, it's not a happy read obviously i would imagine so but again one of those things well, i mean it's covering nazis and concentration yeah camps yeah, yeah. And stuff. So, so it's not like exactly the, the, yeah. yeah you don't have a good time uh, but i just <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's something i want i want to read um there's there's, there's some books that I, 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 I forget what the phrase was someone said recently but it's um it, it's not that it's something you'd want to recommend but it's something that if you're up for the experience it's something that is worth going yeah. through kind of thing yeah see me and my wife went to New York a few years ago and went, we went to the 9-11 memorial and it was not a good day. Like you do not have fun when you're there, but it's good to kind of see and be part of it and experience that. It's the exact same thing, yeah. I suppose, in a book. Um, Red Rice and he thinks the dogs are the British and no doubt they're probably British bulldogs, I'd imagine, possibly. 
Um, it's not what I've read personally. As I say, like it's, it's not anything against that book, but I just got a bit burnt out on Nazis being in, in comic books, so I just kind of avoid anything that's got the World War references in it in any way. So, like, it's not. I say I'm nothing against it. I'll come back to it at some point. But for me, I just got to a point where I was like, Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm out. So if it's if it's got any kind of Nazi reference, even like Captain America, mm -hmm. I just nah, it's not max that, isn't it? Yeah, you can't take so much. Yeah, I agree. Um, Chris is saying it has a lot of humor, a lot of heart. Yes, it's upsetting, upsetting, but the fact life goes on, it's uplifting as well as disturbing. Um, I think again, like I said, it's an important part of literature, isn't it? Like it's been taught in mm -hmm. schools. Like it's something that, that you feel like you should kind of read at some stage. Um, but moving on to something a bit more lighthearted, uh, <laughs> from hell. Yeah. Uh, no, <laughs> like... no. But um. <laughs> So I have the singles of this, um, but this in the last month or so since the uh, James Gunn announcements has yeah. gone everywhere. You can't pick this up. Um, luckily, my local comic book store had some copies left, and I want to reread it again. Um, I just don't have the, have the hassle of picking out eight single issues to read. So I grabbed the trade of Supergirl, um, Woman of Tomorrow. Um, if that's what they're basing the movie on, it's a bit of a random point to start a character on. Hmm. Like it is, yeah. it, it is. I mean, it's a good character journey point, but you haven't given us who this character is. Yeah, because you're you're right to what you're saying. Because from what I remember, uh, what's her name? I'm terrible at remembering names of characters. Supergirl, whatever her name is, she Cal flies. She flies to another planet to where like there's no sun. She doesn't have the, the enhanced powers, so she's able to drink and be drunk and get drunk. And then after that, it's like, it's like the movie True Grit, where somebody, family has just been slain, and she employs her to help her find her killer and so forth. But mm -hmm. um, really good, really it's like, funny. It's like a slightly more adult version, I think, of when Supergirl joined the Red Lanterns in the in this New 52 run, where she's a little mm -hmm. bit younger at that point, so she can't... I think she they actually tries to get a drink or something, and Guy takes it off of her and says he can't drink because you're a minor. Um, <laughs> and and it, it's, a, it's a whole thing. Um, so this is like a slightly more adult version of of that as a, as a story um but she, i just she, she she swears a lot in this a lot of cuss yeah, yeah yeah i i just want bef before this even if you jump to this as your second film I, I would want the cara like crashes to earth story where you know do the movie version but just go balls to the wall where mm -hmm. the whole idea is cara has been circuiting the planet for like the last 10 years or however long it's taken for superman to grow up that entire time she's been absorbing the sun she's now come down She's confused. The army goes for her and she goes full out and she's like 10 times the strength of Superman. That's the movie I want first. Then do this. Yeah, like I feel like they, they, if, they, if this is a, an important part of her later on in life where she wants to experience different things than being a hero, yeah, kind of thing, yeah, yeah. they should have that hero part first. Then they can depower her and they can show yeah. the opposite, you know? Again, I, I think. Like... Go ahead. So I, so I like uh, Jeff Lowe and Tim Sale's um, introduction to Kara. I'd, I'd love to see that. In a movie, I know we've got it in the animated movie, so I'm quite happy we've got it in some form. But I yeah. would like that to be the the introduction, and maybe they could just show that and skip forward to this because we all know that the reason that book has been picked is because Tom King is one of the people that uh, James Gunn's been consulting. Mm -hmm. So he's going to pick his Supergirl <sighs> run, isn't he? If he's going to go with that, saying that you're right, but saying that 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 yeah. is very good. I would recommend you read that, to be honest. I have um, heard that. I'm not going to take that away from yeah. it because I'm pleased it's got the traction it's got now because I'm hoping that the sale or the trade is going to push a deluxe edition. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I, I bought the trade because I want to read it soon. Um, and if they if they bring a deluxe or an absolute, pos it's a good size for an absolute. It's eight issues, um, I believe. I can't remember if there was a random one shot. You know, sometimes they'll do like a random... Or Tom Kane will have like a twelve issue run with like some random one shot. I can't remember if it did. I don't think it did. Um, but eight issues. Um, give us an absolute. This because the art in that's it's a Bill Bill Quis, Bill Bill Quis Everly, and I'll just try see, I can show you some of the um, art without spoiling Sorry, anything. This for one second. I'll be right back. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'll try to show you something without spoiling it. Um, so I've never read it, but I know I know the gist of the 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 kind of story of what's what's kind of in it as a, an overall kind of thing. As I looked at the first couple of single issues, but as I've said with most things, I wait now until it comes out as like a 
an oversized or, or some sort of collected edition before I buy into it now. So just been yeah. kind of holding off. It's just quite um, like otherworldly, and uh, it's a very different take on. Do you know on even like that kind of comic book art? It's got its own kind of feel. I think. Yeah, do you know like the the Thor run, the Jason Aaron Thor, and it was mm-hmm. uh, oh, what was the artist in it? Uh, terrible at remembering names, but I feel like this this per, it, Belquist Evelie should have been the artist on that, even though that was good. This is better. I would suit a Thor book more than a Supergirl book. Um, I know Martin's left. I'm going to run through some trades quickly. I don't know anything about these. I just picked them up because I want to read them. Um, Geiger and Rogue Son. I'm okay. picking them because I'm getting all the the Massive First stuff. I'm getting Radiant Black in um, singles, but I'm going to pick up all the other stories and trade and just have one big kind of yeah. Massive first binge, so that's what I'm going for. I hope they collect Radiant Black at some point, even if it doesn't collect all the spin off stuff, like just like a hardcover of Radiant I, Black. I, mean, I would imagine it's um, it's Image Comics, but obviously it kind of follows the the Power Rangers. It's just the same creator from the Power Rangers. I can imagine yeah, it's the same kind of year, model. Like, yeah, yeah, like a year one, year two hardcover collection of some sort. Um, I mentioned the Flash, Scott uh, gave me this for my birthday. This is the volume. 17 i believe um 16s were the had the jeremy adams run kicked off which is fantastic it's wally west and i'll talk about that later on hopefully but this is the next one in that so that's top of the pile to be honest because yeah. flash I'm, is... i really need to finish off the williamson run because i i kind of held off when it started going to trades so i have i haven't finished off the the kind of williamson stuff but i keep planning on, on doing that now that wally's kind of back although i have read one or two of the the wally issues like i picked up the annual have you read the annual like the Wild Wests, yeah, it's in it's in the first book, I think. Yeah, I yeah, read that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I really enjoy that one. Have you um, read Heroes in Crisis? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, this volume, um, I, I don't want to spoil it. Improves that. It makes it better. <laughs> fixes basically. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> in a good way. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, Heroes in Crisis is a gorgeous book. It's just what they did with the characters, like. Yeah, here I, I said the score. Like here, I, I I felt really let down by Heroes in Crisis, to be honest. However, the latest, the Flash volume before that, makes me like it again. To the point I want to go back and reread it, knowing what I know now. Um, I do Flash. wonder if they'll ever put like the Wally arc together, if you like, like if they'll do. Edition? Yeah, well, like the the first um, Rebirth issue was Wally coming back. Mm-hmm. Then there was like an issue where like he tries to speak to the the Titans um and he's and he's like connecting with with Dick. Um then then he has an issue in the Flash where mm-hmm. where he comes back. Then you get Heroes in Crisis, Flash Forward, mm-hmm. and then you would get the start of this. If they were to take like that and kind of collect it as like Wally's return as like an overall thing, that'd be quite nice. I don't know if they'd ever do that, but for fans that would kind of make a lot of this all worthwhile. Do you, think it, do you think it would work if they do the Williamson run in omnibus format, but then when you get to this point where, you know, we switch, when the first Omni gets released there, they'll bring those issues in. Pull it in at the start there. of the first Omni. So or it's, have like it's, it's an intro or yeah, separate, to that yeah. point. Yeah, you need, you need something to to lead from one to the other. I don't think yeah. just having the, the first issue he appears in the flash is, is an, is enough. Like at the very least you'd, you'd need the rebirth issue. And you, even like the flash forward stuff is flash forward. Is that where he kind of like merged with Dr. Manhattan or something like that? Wasn't it? Or he gets like Dr. That? Manhattan's chair. Um, yeah. So, so basically he gets his powers um, yeah. and, and then he becomes so fast. He can literally run through the multiverse to fix all the problems that because he, he does cause. He does have that's a, he's he's the prominent character that fixes things for them for Doomsday Clock. So and he was the, already yeah. the fastest man alive on yeah. Earth. Now he's the fastest man in the multiverse. Yeah. Like there's no like, there's See, no question. Wally West is the fastest Flash. Full stop. That's that's uh, you know I'm a Wally West fan. I'm Barry Allen's okay. I just I prefer Wally West. I think you're right. If they collected something like that, like Wally West kind of journey, if you so to speak, in the modern day stuff. Yeah. It would be. I mean, it would have little holes in it, but it would it would work. I think so. I'll be all for that. 
Um, next up, I grabbed the latest. Uh, is it the latest one, or maybe it's the fourth one? Because I'm a few behind. Oh, the the, books, yeah. I keep meaning to get onto those. The Ghost in Ye. I can't remember if it, is it the fourth one, I think it's the fourth one. Um, I should be have the first three, so it should be the fourth one. Um, and then TMNT, we mentioned the IDW books. This is um, the collection volume seven. Now, I don't have volumes five and six, but I'm starting to panic about these now. Because they're doing like the paperbacks, I'm worried that they're going to stop producing these. So yeah. I'm now just grabbing these as soon as I can. Um, I, I, mean, I, well, I would have Well, I would have said that if it wasn't for the fact that they've continued bringing them out for the current run. Yeah. So like they've brought out 14 and 15. 15. Mm -hmm. So with them doing that, they they have to allow the people who buy 13, 14, 15 to go back and buy the rest. Like, Especially before... Like, and IDW have been really yeah. good up up until they lose licenses with like the Transformers and stuff, where like if they've got like three phases, they're still printing them. Yeah. Well, I don't like paying more than £30 for those books because... No, they are getting expensive. Like yeah, They are like £55 now for yeah. some of these things. It's the same with the, with the, um, with the Sonic ones. Um, so what I tend to do is wait till closer to the time and move my pre-orders around until I get to about 35. Yeah. Well, that one there was around 35. And like I say, I, I put it on my wish list for the family to buy me it. So I didn't want to pay that extra £5. But I'm hoping to get the rest in the round of £30 mark. 35 is okay to do, I suppose. But I just don't want to pay the 50, 55, because I guess it's far too much. And I had the same panic as you. Sorry, I had the same panic as you. Like I, I struggled to get volume six. This is going back maybe a year or so, which is one with April on it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. As soon as I had that struggle, I then went out and bought the rest, as we can see behind me. I've, I've got... See, that's what I'm thinking now. Like I, I, I'm going to try and get um, five and six. I've seen eight, eight, nine, ten, and above. Like they're there, no yeah. problem. Um, again, you can get the prices up and down. Even on Amazon, the prices are up and down. But I, I think I'm going to get to the point where I'm just going to buy all of them in one, one swoop just to not have the sweat on. Like, Well, I mean, what I do with a lot of things, it all depends on what patient, how, what kind of patience you have with stuff and, you know, what risk you're willing to kind of take and if you have the budget to spend, yeah. you know, yeah. when you need to. Um, but, but what I'll do is I'll set a maximum price for myself on, say, for instance, these Supergirl books I'm trying to pick up just now. And I know they retail up to like £25. They keep floating up and down on on um on amazon and on various other kind of sites um but if i know that i have say 60 pounds to spend on the four books i just buy them as and when they drop to that price so if i see two one day i'll buy the two if i see one i'll buy the one and i'll buy them in whatever order because i know i'm going to buy the set yeah yeah you know if, yeah. It, if, it, if it's something that i was only going to buy the first couple of and try something and then read through it and then continue reading it as i buy it kind of thing and it was an unproven thing that you know it's like and it's like 20 volumes or something you know um like say when i did the nightwing run it was like eight or nine volumes of nightwing and it came out like they were coming out like every six months i just kind of got them as they came out and if i didn't like the the next volume i kind of stopped so when it went to the peter tomasi stuff i just stopped but with yeah stuff like that i just i don't worry about it i just kind of like build up the collections so the same with like the usagi jimbo like i've started reading through it but i've just stopped it where i've got a gap and I'm just still currently filling in the gaps as and when I can kind of get them. So if I can get, say, the trade paperback first print edition of volume eight of Usagi before they do a reprint for mm -hmm. cheaper than I'd pay for the reprint, then I'll just buy it because I don't care. Like, I just See, want I'm boost. Used, I'm using the same tactic as you with The Walking Dead. I, I, I've, I don't want to spend too much on some of the volumes. So I've got every single one that I've not got so far on like a watch list. Yeah. And I'm just waiting for them to creep down a little bit. And when they creep down, I pick one up. Or if you're really picky about quality as well, um, when I was doing the Fables run, what I would do is buy like people's bundles up. Um, so I would go and I would buy like someone's volume, say four to seven, and say I already had four. I would then just pick which copy of four was the better quality and then sell off the other one. Not bad, cool. Mm. Um, I've, seen that, I've seen that Fables yeah. uh, box set that's released. Uh, this way of like the four compendiums yeah yeah it's cool it's not as cool as the hardcovers though yeah because <laughs> that, that's the one you kind of didn't finish because you got a bit no it's i mean it's it's one of those things right like like there's so many comics that when you watch channels like ourselves or much larger channels they have behind them and 
they somewhat talk up, but they don't really get into the gritty of what the book is. And mm -hmm. we all have different personalities. We all have different tastes and stuff. So we're going to click with things, you know, better or, or kind of worse. Um, and for me, Fables was just really slow family drama type stuff. And when you got the Fables moments, there were so few and far between and they happened so quickly. Like the, the war that you build up to through seven volumes takes place in an issue. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Done. Move on. Next, next story arc. And then they spend like another maybe three or four volumes building up to a fight like between the two, the two main sisters and then they just call it off. And I'm just like, no, this this just like, if you love the artist and you love some of the styles and you can put up with the occasional time that it changes off the main artist and you like just slice of life stories and you're maybe going to read an issue or two a day, um, you know, before you go to bed or something like that, then Fables could be a nice palate cleanser type thing to read. Mm -hmm. But it's not something I'd be telling people to like hunt down. It's not something that I've either been wowed by that I'd be like, this is one of the most amazing things I've read you should check out, or even really freaked out by and had like weird offensive moments and stuff like say Transmetropolitan, where I'm like, you should read that because it's so screwed up. You'll never get nothing, something else that kind of is that weird. Um, this just kind of sits there in the middle and is like, eh. Um, and yeah, I got my girlfriend to read the first hardcover and she stopped if that puts it in perspective. Like, she wouldn't yeah. even go past that. Is, 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 is it fantasy? It's like a fantasy th uh, genre, isn't it? it? It is. I mean, the very basic premise is that something's happened in the this sort of fables world that certain fables have had to escape and create a little kind of haven in our world, but they can't let the humans see that they're their fables so to begin with you get a little bit of like how they're in the town and the magics and how they're hiding from from the normies as they call us um mm -hmm. kind of thing and, and and that kind of thing's going on and you learn like some people why certain people are getting away with certain things why certain people are not allowed to be ar around and, and things like that and there's some interesting twists of where they make like the great north wind is like the big bad wolf's dad and that's why he has that gust of how he can blow so hard and like stuff like that like there's in, there's little things that like are interesting takes but there's just so many other things that bored me like it just dragged on for so long the artist changes weren't that fun it had these like, art outlines around the pages that was supposed to look like old school kind of nursery rhyme style books but rather than it being designed across a few page spread it was just repeated so then in the gutter you had this weird offset where the pictures didn't match up and like it was just again it's, it's little things but well, when you've spent about a year and a half hunting something down to then read it, again, there's a lot of hype in, in your head. And then you, yeah. you get to it and you're like, uh. so I, said, I, gave it, I gave it maybe about half to just over half. And I've still got them just now because I've not been able to kind of take pictures and clear them all out and everything. But um, I plan on just kind of cleaning it. Um, and I said, some things work, some things don't. Like Usagi, I tried and I, I really enjoyed. Um, mm -hmm. I, I highly recommend. Um, in Invincible, I hunted down in the hardcovers before they got re reprints, um, and they, that was really good. Um, not something that I think is the best thing ever, but definitely something I'll read through at least once more. Um, I don't think of anything else like weird that I hunted down. I've got like the Ex Machina hardcovers rather than the Omnibus, just because that Omnibus is huge. Um, it's not my favourite book ever, but it's probably one of my favourite Brian K. Vaughan books. I was, say, I was thinking it was Brian K. Vaughan, yeah. Um, I haven't read it myself. Ex Machina. Um, is there just the one? Or, or just the one omnibus? Or it's one two? omnibus, or it's five Wildstorm hardcovers if you get the original prints. Um, Red Rider said he felt the same of Alan Moore's Swamp Thing. All this hype, and I couldn't push through the, the f three issues. Um, is Alan yeah. Moore's Swamp Thing? Is that, is that the one like the first volume could like ridiculously priced like twenty four pound for the, the absolute? The, yeah, absolutes were yeah yeah. yeah. Um, but then there was a whole controversy around that as well because they recolored, recolored. it for the absolutes. So the original standard sized hardcovers have the original coloring, mm -hmm. and the absolutes have recolouring. Um, so there was a little bit of controversy back and forth there. But for me personally. It's just too heavy prose. Like, yeah. I, even as someone who likes crime noir type things that are sometimes um, sort of narration driven, there's narration that flows and there's narration that's just describing the page panel for panel, section for section. And like, 
this guy clearly is a really good prose writer. He's not a comic writer, in my personal opinion. Um, Alan Moore, so, we're talking here. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Neil Gaiman, Alan Moore, or any of those kind of guys, in my personal opinion. Um, I think if you like prose, you will really enjoy their books because you will get prose with gorgeous art. But if you're looking for the perfect comic, they're not really comic books. I'm just waiting for Chris to comment here because he's a big watchman and Faith and Fendetta and. Beef and Vendetta yeah. is slightly different. Beef and Vendetta is a slight, mm. slightly different. It's not quite as heavy on the narration side of things. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I said it's all the big ones. Like, you know, you take like um, Sandman or, um, um, I mean, like, you know, Red Straw Hat got me to read uh, Preacher. And yeah. again, like, I read Preacher through. That's. Uh, Garth Innes did, did, did that one mm -hmm. um, that wasn't so heavy prose but again I just felt it was a little bit overrated and some of the the crudeness was just <laughs> crude for crude's sake um, you know but then again Garth Innes likes that Garth Innes is yeah. you know, one of these writers that wrote like Crossed you know so mm -hmm. so like he's not someone to hold these kind of punches um, and I did a, a review on Preacher because I felt something change slightly in the background of the story. Maybe I read more into it than I, I should have, but I took a very different take on on Preacher's ending than, than some other people took. Um, but again, I think that's interesting because people yeah. actually reviewing it and going in and talking about it is what makes these things more interesting to me. Like, I don't want to just see like 10 shiny embossed Berserk books on someone's shelf. I want you to tell me why I should read Berserk, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, Funny enough, my next book is Berserk. Shit, am I joking? It's not really. Um, <laughs> I like I like these black label stuff. So I like uh, Larry say Final Mirrors, a Swamp Thing, very satisfying. But I think it helps to have read the original series uh, to really feel the huge plot twist Mirror does with their origin. You really have to read the OG first. Swamp See, Thing's not something I've kind of really thought about ever reading to be honest i, I kind of read it but read it the other way around i read the new 52 swamp thing which kind of reverts back to the original Snyder. way that swamp thing is yeah um so like basically one version of swamp thing says that that it's him converted into the swamp thing and one version of swamp thing says that they created a copy of him out of plants basically um and it switches between writers um, as to that's why there's been more than one Swamp Thing and why they don't have the memories of the previous runs and stuff like that. Um, but it, it makes it really interesting for the, for the story idea. I just personally couldn't get past the level of prose. See, I've got the Bronze Age Omnibus for Swamp Thing and that covers, I'm assuming that's what, that covers what Larry's referring to. Mm -hmm. So and I've also got the Absolutes of... Um, which is the Alan Moore stuff that comes right yeah, after that. that. And then I think Nancy Collins comes after that, is it, if I'm that's right? It. But I've also got the trade paperback box set. So if anyone's after the original colours, they are in the trade paperback box set. Nice. So I'm investing in Swamp Thing. Yeah. But... Oh, a really popular character, but I just I couldn't get, get past that point on the on the Moore stuff. I as I, said, as I read the um the Snyder Soul stuff through when I first got the Snyder hardcover, and then I read it through again as the whole thing when I got the omnibus. Um. I quite like the soul bit at the end, to be honest. He goes a little bit wild with the different like avatars and stuff, to be honest. It felt like a Grant Morrison story in some ways. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm the kind of person that gets burnt out of repeating the same kind of stories or tropes and stuff. So, like, I need to take a little bit of break from things. And by that point, I'd read, like, three Swamp Thing books in the space of, like, a year. So I just kind of took a step back. Um, Red Ray is asking, didn't they release a fourth Swamp? Absolute that matches Moore's set. Isn't that Len Wynn's good possibly? Absolutely. Possibly, that'd be cool. Bronze Age Omnibus covers more. You get literally the full, I think, to, to tell me if I'm wrong, I think you get the full, or right the way out to Alan Moore's run in that Bronze Age Omnibus where the Len Wynn one, you only get his His own specific issues. Yeah, okay, okay. We also have some YouTube royalty in the chat. We have Omar for Near Mint Condition, who's saying Fables is great. So uh, disagrees with Larry and Highland G. <laughs> I think that's pretty prominent in his, his collection, those those uh, hardcovers, aren't they? Omar is a, is a massive fan of Fables and the creator. Um, mm. So yeah, 
Um, I don't think anything would put him off of off of that. It's, it's one of his favourites. But as I said, it's, it's going to come down to how you read it as well. I think I think if you read it as like a few issues at a time, as a kind of light evening sort of slice of lifestyle thing, you might enjoy it more. Um, but I was coming, I was again reading a lot of fabled things going into it before kind of getting up to that point. So I'd read like some grim fairy tales. I'd read some um sort of robin hood with the other alternate spelling where it's the girl with the the kind of sliced eye and stuff um and i was expecting a little bit more kind of action i guess and what i got was slice of life um and yeah it wasn't for me but i think for younger readers that might mm -hmm. want something a bit more of a kind of lighter fairy tale type things it might be something they they enjoy but at that point i'd say buy the compendiums because the hardcovers are going to be impossible if you handle them we are all getting complimented um our accents um, yeah, I don't have the best one. I think these guys sing well. These are more natural uh, voices for the YouTube and radio. My aim, my aim for 2023 is to be in a for Omar's end of year uh, best reads of the year because I was very jealous when Chris appeared on it last last year. So uh, I've I've already asked. There's there's my ask. Give me my want. Here we go. Um, <laughs> I'll move on to complete my haul because I have five more books here. I want to get through it quickly and we'll just discuss yeah, some more of recent reads. So these black label books, the DC black label stuff, I, I, can't remember, I can't remember who it is. Someone said they're picking them all up. And I thought, why am I not picking them all up? Because I like the format, but they're terrible in single mm -hmm. issues. And obviously they're, they're basically Elseworld kind of stories, aren't they? So they, they're going to have a lot more things you could do with it. This is the Catwoman Lonely City. And again, um, is it written? That's where it was the one guy that wrote and draw it, yeah. Yeah, Chris Chang. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, the guy did Wonder Woman. Yeah, yeah, done Wonder Woman. Yeah, so again, I don't know anything about the story myself. I've heard a lot of people talk about it and say it's very good. They really enjoyed it, but I, I, I do think I want to go back now and pick up all the Black Label stuff because, like, I, I just like the format of the book, and I have a few of the mm. single issues, like the Batman Damned, um, one of the Harley Quinn ones, and they're terrible to store. In the like a short box or a long box, whatever. So I really should. Um... It's one of those things as to why I keep going back to European books because the European books have that format. Um, you, it's, it's almost like you get an extra sort of two or three panels in your page. It just it's pretty nice. I'm glad I'm not the only one that feels this way because I keep buying them as well. I don't even hesitate as soon as I find out they're that magazine style. I buy them. Yeah. I've mm -hmm. just ordered uh, Lobo versus Superman and mm -hmm. um, Suicide Squad, Blaze. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh -huh. on my radar too. Yeah. I mean, as long as it's not something that stands out that I'm I'm kind of bored by, as I've probably I've mentioned a few times with things like, so say like if it was like, the, I think was it Jeff Lemire did like a Joker one or something at one point, like I probably would have skipped over that. Jo um, Joker Killer Smile is that one, I think? Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah. Like I would, I would have just been like, yeah, another Joker book kind of thing. And um, it's the same like all these, it yeah. seemed like these one shots recently, like one bad day stuff. Like to be honest, to me personally, they feel like nice starting points for new readers but cash grabs for old readers so i'm kind of just like ignoring it i think that that's that is what that is the cash grab that it's obviously based on the killing joke type of thing like the, what if you have one bad day um and i've heard they're very good um i mean if they collect them shows. all in a deluxe hardcover for like 30 quid or something I'll, I'll maybe buy it at that point but i'm not buying individual hardcovers for each no, have, have you seen the one where it's like a box set you buy i think it's out in june you could buy the killing joke mm -hmm. and the first one and like with the box set and then you obviously fill it in yourself with all the hardcovers the, the same with doomsday clock where they brought it out as half the yeah. book and then gave you a box set and stuff it's like just give us the one hardcover like come on no, I, was, I bought that but now i want the absolute yeah so sort of wasting yeah. my money on that just in hello to Stee. Um, he's picking up all the uh, the Black Label books as well. He loves the format. Again, I think with I've Black got a few stuff, to pick up, especially anything by like Darwin Johnson. I've not picked up any of that yet, so that's my oh, next it, kind of I think, um, oh, um, rabbit, Wonder Woman, rabbit to go down. Is it, oh, what's that? What's Wonder Woman called? Dead Earth. Dead, Dead Earth. Earth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I need to get, I need to get that and just everything else that he's got in deluxe so far. So I still think the standout for me is Harleen, and that was one of the first ones that came out. Like Harley mm -hmm. was a phenomenal read. Um, uh, was Batman. Was the second one out. Batman Dam. Was Batman Dam was movie. the first one out, and that was on with the Batwang, and that's where it got all all the kind of headlines because they showed his <laughs> Todger. Um, but the actual story itself was. I mean, Cedric writes these sort of perfect um, relationship stories. I, I'm, I'm a massive fan of his Sunstone series about the the two girls who are the kind of like BDSM 
um, kind of friends. And and like it's not something very many people talk about, but it's like his main biggest thing that he's ever kind of done. He does two hardcovers of it, and he's on to like a third arc of it kind of now. Um, I was gonna say he hard- doesn't he doesn't do any he won't go to mainstream Marvel or DC any longer. But no, so this is an image thing. Um, he's been doing image. for years. Um, yeah. so um, as I say, it's called Sunstone, and he's done like five arcs of it, as Sunstone, and now he's on to an arc that's called Mercy, which is about a slightly different couple, and he's building a universe, basically, um, of these these characters, and they live in this world where, basically, their their hobby, or the thing they're interested in, um, is BDSM and related things, and these two girls meet through this um, sort of web chat rooms type thing, um, and kind of meet up as, as, as friends to kind of talk about their hobby and kind of stuff like that. Um, and it be- eventually builds up into a relationship between the two of them and they have to kind of um, deal with this whole thing of are they friends or are they just wanting to further the hobby kind of thing um, or do they have a relationship and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it gets really um, sexually driven, but it's not pornographic and it gets really emotionally driven as well. Like you follow these characters on a journey all the way through your your tears as they're like breaking up or getting back together or um there's really subtle things throughout the pages where you'll have like puzzle pieces of things kind of like on a page which will refer to a puzzle that someone was doing in a previous panel or something and and there's just it's the detail is amazing. Um I've got a review on my channel of like the first book is probably like four years old at this point and i do plan on redoing one on the on the two books um but honestly like it's one of my favorite books ever and that's for somebody who basically spends half his time reading crime noir like these relationship written stories are amazing and you might come in for like the lesbian girl story but you will leave like in tears over these women's relationship like it's just so well told it sounds like and, that. and then he well, took that to harley and and that that just blew me away. Like the relationship writing and stuff in that is amazing. See, I can't believe I haven't read the Darling yet. I need to set up a time for it. I've got it. I've owned it since it first came out. I've just never got stuck into it. So I think it's one I've, I've got to pull the trigger on sooner rather than later. Please. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it, I mean, it's, it's the origin story of, you know, of Har- Harley meets Joker in, in, um, in the asylum. But it's just done in such a way that again if you think of it like the turtles in modern kind of terms where you've added an actual relationship into there you've added actual manipulation into there and the way he draws every um sort of like nod wink look is important um so like you might have the joker say something to harley and then like she looks away and then you see his face and you see what he actually thinks without him saying anything and like stuff like that it's just it's it's really well done um, sorry, folks, my internet is playing funny buggers again. I did warn everyone at the start of the show. Um, so I missed and he them. was going to do an Ivy book after after the Harley one. Sorry. Um, but he no never way. Yes, that's something that really annoyed me. because it, it, I... it, And when he decided not to work for, yeah. for Marvel anymore. But there is, if you pick up um, Harley, Red, White, and Black, yep. a short that, it, that does like one issue beyond Harleen that he did in the Red, White, and Black. Because, I'll see, like, my I've been giving some comics to my friend who's not a comic book guy, and I gave him Batman Hush re- recently, and he commented on the art more, more like importantly the the Poison Ivy scenes. Like, obviously, she's a good-looking woman, but she looks phenomenal in, in Batman Hush. Mm. So think about this and how he liked that. That kind of kind of got him wanting to read that those books. But Stefan Sajic, Harleen was looked incredible. Imagine we got a poison ivy book. Like, I feel like we've been completely not left. If you followed him on Instagram, phone. he showed some of the concept art for it, oh, and that much. made it even worse. Yeah, because oh. it was so good. I we should have got that. Oh. Like, because the thing is, he he creates through art, and this is also what I find really interesting about him as a as a kind of creator. It's like he writes through his art. So when he's creating things, he'll talk to all the people, interview, learn all the stuff about the people and stuff around that he's creating. Yeah. But then he'll draw a couple of key scenes and extrapolate from them to create arcs rather than writing an arc and then trying to trying to draw it. So if he has an emotional moment or a feeling or something he wants to convey, that's what he's drawing first. Um, so like even at the back of the Sunstone books, there's like so many stories that he hasn't told that he's got like all these little pictures and sketches and stuff in the back of possible stories that are like so much more than a sketch that a normal artist would put in the back of something because every sketch has a, a an idea behind it. 
Um, and I'm always jealous of someone that can draw something in like an afternoon anyway. Like that's just yeah. mental. Mm. I can't it's remember. But I've roughly read the hardcover. I probably have seen the Ivy concept now, but I feel like I need to go back and look at it just to see. But yeah, we, we're definitely missing out. That's something as fans we're all missing out on, definitely. Um, Man, but I loved his older work as well. Like I, I, I said that he used to just do the art side of things. So if you go back to the early Top Cow image stuff, he did a lot of the Aphrodite stuff um, and stuff around that sort of time period. Um, so I've got a lot of his work from back then when he wasn't writing. But did, when it came into when it came into Sunstone and he started writing himself, like I, as I said, I can't talk that book up enough. Did you know, he have as, a, as long as you're old enough to read something of that context? Yeah. Yeah. Did he have a fallout with somebody at DC? Is that what it was? Was there an issue with like working? On I think it was just. What, I think it was just demand. Um, grind. I think, like, um, I mean, I think like a lot of people like working at home, doing your own thing. There's a lot of stresses and depression and other things that kind of go on. And and when you lose control and you feel like you're just being demanded by somebody to put an output, it gets to yeah. a certain point where where you want to kind of walk away from that. Um, and I think he was used to some of the freedoms he had with with Top Cow. That when he started doing Marvel and DC stuff, he enjoyed the characters, but didn't enjoy the sheer sort of demand on him. Mm -hmm. um, and some people can can do that and some can't so he was like well i'd rather finish the three or four stories of my own stuff you know and protect my sanity and um, then try and take on too much so like he's going to go back and do a couple of arcs of other books that he hadn't finished like death vigil and stuff like that yeah um rather than continuing to into marvel and dc where he feels somebody else can pick up the the kind of mantle but i wonder though what Will he always have that stance, or will it change? I mean, the reason why I'm saying that is because I mean, there's always a, there's always a chance he comes back in five to ten years' time if he's, if he's like, at that point. Hickman, Hickman at the minute, who obviously had the X Men kind of resurgence, whatever the the whole Krakoa era, and obviously he left the book because everyone else wanted to stay writing their their X Men books. He wanted to kind of conclude the story, mm -hmm. but he's now doing a four issue event. I can't think of what it's called. Um, it was announced a few days ago. But I get the impression with him, he's happy to just once a year do like a four issue book or something, whatever else. And it almost like takes the pressure of him to, there's no need to create something fantastic. Just do your little event once a year. And I think that's the thing. If he could, if he could create this Ivy book in the background with nobody knowing that he's yeah. making it. And then just and it just, it? and it just gets given to DC in two years time, you know, and they can oh. release it however they want, you know. Because it wouldn't then be the I first think, time. Sorry. I think it that be would be the way time. to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was, I was going to say, it wouldn't be the first time I've heard it mentioned about the pressures from the big two mm -hmm. to artists and writers, you know, some unrealistic time frames. And I'm, with something like that, of that level, just as you say, sit back and let the guy do his thing. If it's two I mean, years it's, down the line, it's two it's, years down the line. It's, if you have the energy to do it, if you're like Dan Mora and you're young and you have the drive and energy to do it and you can just burst out through stuff, then like he's he's at that point where he can just go all out he's he's um literally for boom and for dc like their character design guy so he does all their main covers all their main character designs if power rangers needs a new character if a wrestler needs a new character if whatever it is boom just calls him in he draws the character design and then the artist takes over from there and um, it's like they don't trust their own artist to create something because dan always comes in and does it um but since dc got their hands in him they've done the same thing dc redrew mm. half their characters with with dan mora and got yeah. new costumes from Superman family and so on and so forth, and just, just got him to do to do them all. Wasn't he the one that drew like the the key art sort of display of the characters that were coming in Dawn of DC? Yes, he I was. Think so. yeah, 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 yeah. He drew the yeah. lot. Yeah, he's done the the current you know Turtles, Power Rangers, whatever it is that crossover. Um, like he's World's he's finest. on World's Finest. Yeah, exactly. When, you know, like one of the only reasons that Wade's back with DC. Um, like, you know, like it's, it's crazy. Like, like he's, he's doing so much stuff, but is that I think he has that energy for whatever reason he has that energy right now. Whereas people like, even like Donny Cates have, have taken yeah. it to the point where they went, no, right. I can't, I can't take it. Just um, must say hello to Connie. Connie, I noticed in the chat earlier on, but my internet was uh, playing up, but she's saying the same thing. She's heard creators talking on podcasts about bad experiences with the big two. Um, how they run things, and I think you're right. I think eventually they just the demand is so, like the grind is there, but it's just mm -hmm. like, you want like, to do the characters, but yeah. it's not worth your own emotional burnout. Yeah, and that's why we're getting such quality indie books because 
they're keeping all their best ideas for that as well. Um, I think that's what the black can... label books work as well, the shorter ones, because they're not under yeah. demand for so long. Exactly. Um, I, if I remember as well, the Harding one, like, I think he did say it was like a passion project of his as well, and he, he was able to have the time to do it, because like what you're saying, like they had so many titles lined up for Black Label to start, but that was one of them. Where now yeah. it's more, it's like the label's going, it's, it's rolling, we need the books out now, as opposed to in six months, a year from now, we're going to release these books. Can you get something ready for that? And they had to come out in issues, and they had this yeah. whole rollout. And, yeah. You know, whereas I, I think now they could almost have some creators just create things in the background, and once they're done, just release them as graphic novels on Black Label. Yeah, the same way as what like Brew Baker and Sean Phillips do. Just release that title on its own. Don't release them in three books. Just release that. Magazine Especially with what you guys are saying, is it doesn't fit well on the shelves. I don't buy many singles anyway, but if I did buy singles, I wouldn't buy them of weird shaped books because they don't fit in my display. Like, see, I don't mind the shape of the um, the magazine hardcovers because they, they go quite all right on the shelf. Like, yeah, oh, yeah for for, yeah, for the hardcovers, but I'm not I'm not going to take a whole bunch of singles that don't fit in my short box. No, no, I, I, I'm not a singles guy, so it's uh, I've got a few singles for covers, but I'm, I'm more collected editions. I can't seem to, sh to shake the singles. I'm trying my best to cut my singles down, to, to, just to collect the, the collected editions. But it's it's a tough one because there's still some good stuff coming out. Um, well, I tend to get suckered in by the art, or yeah. I want to try something that's by a publisher that is not as tried and tested, and I just don't know if a trade's going to come out. So then I end up buying like five singles of some random samurai book, more than like um, that. I don't know if I'm going to like until I've got got the the fifth book, book or whatever, because I, I buy the whole thing through and read it as one. Um, I just want to move on. I have, my, I have three more books to show, and then we could make what no, talk. Cool. Let the tangents go on. Spider Gwen, we mentioned this earlier on. The, the only reason I actually picked this up was because my daughter's been watching like Spidey and his amazing friends. She's been watching the Spider Verse uh, animated movie. And I feel like I bought this for her. So at some stage, whenever my kids are old enough to read the collection, this is here for her. I, I want to read it myself too, don't get me wrong. But I think that's the only reason why I pulled the trigger before this goes out of print. And I think it probably will at some stage, yeah. I'd imagine. Especially I if the, it has one out of print already. I think it has. Don't hold me to that. I'm not sure yeah. if it's in my Mars reprint uh, or not. But Because yeah. this um, has been dropping in price the last, the last little while. And this is an Amazon purchase. Um, it, it was like... I can't remember the price to be fair, but it was the cheapest it's been in a while, and I just pulled the trigger. The only thing I will say about it, and I don't know how much you like care about this, but the book feels slightly lopsided. I don't know, it's not a showing camera, like it's leaning to one side, like the spine. Can you see it slightly? So it, it, it and this bit, it dips down the way here. So it's Somebody. like, even if someone had like force it up, I don't know if that matters, it won't make a difference. Probably not, but I just I thought to myself, is it a bit lopsided? That's probably how it's stored. I think when you crack it open and you stretch it out a little bit, you'll be yeah. okay. I'm not something for it, but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to return it or anything like that. So sometimes they just glue it in slightly, up, like a slight off yeah. angle, like it. Sorry, guys, just need one second. second. But uh, I'm going to. I want to get into that. And there's a Spider Gwen. I'm going to Spider Man. Spider Gwen book coming out. I think in a few months time. I just mute Martin here because he's probably going to tell somebody off. Um. <laughs> So yeah, I also picked up DC Dark Knight. Well, didn't because this was a birthday gift. Gift um, DC Dark Knight's Metal. Um, I was so happy that I went for the standard one of that because when they yeah. when they they released the DM with a coloured in cover, yeah, I didn't like I it. Guess. No, I I like the pencil sketch. The sketch looks so nice. Look, yeah, looks so yeah. cool, and that's why I pre-ordered the sketch. And I remember it was actually Martin who sent me the link to this because I I had the pre-order. For, for Forbidden Planet, it says in the life of someone this for my birthday. Do you want to pick it up for me and give it to me as a gift? She says, Yes. And it was the sketch variant. But then yeah. Martin has seen yeah. this so much. We were, we were discussing that you can get yeah. a speedy hen for like 20 quid cheaper. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. got this instead, and it's such a far better cover. And you're right, that variant that came out colored, it does not look nice at Did, all. No. They should have kept the sketch, to be honest. But um, the RRP in this as well is stupid. Like really daft. Like oh, it's, it's like 150, I want to say, 150 dollars, yeah. and like it's not that big. Like it's not as thick as Spider Gwen. And bear in mind, DC's paper quality is slightly thicker than 
than Marvel. It's, it's literally because it's an event book and it's got Scott Snyder's name on it. It's right? just ridiculously like... priced. Um, but yeah, happy to have it. I read Metal. I read it in a single. So it was actually the, I jumped in the comics whenever Metal was just coming out. So I had to go back a month or two and trace all the, the back issues for it. Um, I've read great. the Metal event but um, and a couple of like tie-in issues, but I've never read the whole thing. So I'm actually looking forward to reading the complete yeah. kind of thing. So I've had a lot more tie-ins for Death Metal than I did for Metal. I, re I read them all myself at the time, but I, I, I want to go back and read it in this way, in this manner, and just kind of absorb it all again. Um, and the last thing I picked up, other than the next, you should say, than the Daredevil that Martin's already shown off, um, is... The same yellow cover. Yeah. Is um, The Old Spider-Man. Yeah. Volume 2. So I... Um, How big is that? Is that the Omnibus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the Omnibus. That came out just the earlier. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. Um, it's actually not a bad size. I think they're releasing them in a good sort yeah. of... They're not too fat. They're not... You know, I was I'm worried they were going to go for like the new Avengers one, you know, where like it's just stupid. No, these are a nice. These are a nice size. So about the same same thickness as the metal omnibus. Um, yeah, two or three hardcovers is, is okay. Yeah. The um, for our end of year chat, if you recall, I picked the old Spider Man Volume One as my read of twenty twenty two because um, I absolutely loved that. That was fantastic and. Volume two is here. Volume three is coming in a few months, and I think there's a bit of issues with how they're going to collect the series out. Um, but I'm just here to enjoy the ride up until then. But really enjoy that. I, to I still think they're going to release it under the same title as the original Omni release, but they're going to do what Omar's mentioned before about putting the volume number on the back. Yeah, and maybe putting five on it. So yeah, they... see when he said that about the Captain America books. I was like, no, don't give me that. Assuming he meant the spine, because that would really annoy me if he put like volume four and five on the spines of the new ones coming later this year for the cat books. But if it's in the back, it's fine. It's in the yeah, same sort of idea as the epic collections. Yeah, what they do in the DC books now is they they tend to give the the trades anyway. They give they give it like a subtitle, so they give like the arc a name, um, and then they put the volume number. There's like a lower third of the back of the back that they make all black. And they give like a little synopsis, and it'll say like volume five or, or whatever there. That's yeah, it. yeah, the, the very bottom. Yeah. yeah. So for the flash, I thought it was seventeen, but couldn't see it on the spine. But this is called Eclipsed. But you're right. So they have volume seventeen on the back. Yeah, which is great if you see it in the physical shop. But if you're looking it up on the website, it's a pain in the butt because it still just yeah. gets called by the name of the book and not the number. Yeah, it is a pain actually. You're right. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's especially for the flash because the flash had a. A year one volume that was in the middle of its uh, Williamson run, and I still yeah. don't know what volume that's actually supposed to be because I haven't bought it yet. Um, hang on, I'll have the answer if you're on that one. Here we are. <laughs> um, while, you're, while you're searching that up, Martin, the House of Nerds show saying hey, 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 all. How are you? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's my haul. That's that's quite a significant haul, I think, for the month of February. Um, have you cracked off. open any of it? No, that's 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 the sad part. There's not like <laughs> I haven't, but no, I actually it was it was just my, birth, my birthday there this past Sunday, so I was waiting for this show to showcase it. The first thing I want to read is the Flash, to be honest, just because it's easy because it's a trip back as well. But the Flash, um, like, even for my recent read, I talked about volume 16, like that, it's a good jumping on part point for flash readers and if you do quite like wally west like this is it like the joshua williamson run i would like to read i'd like to go back and read now but i'm happy to start here as my kind of flash uh journey whatever you want to call it but um mm. this has made me like the flash and i thought the flash was a daft character um basically what the, the the recent run is is that wally west who wants to kind of retire he wants to give it up Go, you know, be a be go be a, a husband, go be a father. He wants to give up this superhero life. So him and Barry are going to enter the Speed Force and try and remove him from the Speed Force. But turns out he gets trapped in it, and uh, there's a problem with the Speed Force, and he needs to go back and fix it. And it's almost like Quantum Leap, where he's gone back in time and defurious like f former Flash, like bodies or whatever. He even goes like you, you mentioned Nazis earlier on. There's a part where he goes back and fights Hitler, but it's done really well. <laughs> and um, it's just really entertaining, really good, and it's really heartfelt. And I'm not, I'm not going to spoil anything else more, other than that, but the whole Heroes in Crisis thing, if you've read that and know how that 
how that what happened, how that ends. This goes back and it makes you like, if, you know, if you're a grown man who have never has never cried before, you will be close to crying. I, I would say this is really heartwarming, really sad, but really good. And um, obviously, now Wally West is back as as the main Flash, and I'm looking forward to this volume, volume seventeen. But Flash is my uh, it's a character I never thought I would like. Um, I used to give Scott stick because I used to say Cyborg was the better member of the Justice League, but nah, the Flash is great. Um, I love the Flash. Yeah, I never, I never liked early Flash stuff. It was never something that kind of was Same. was kind of connecting to me. Um, a lot of the, the time, especially Barry Allen stuff, just never really connected with me at all. It wasn't until I read the um, the Jeff Johns run Wally West that I was like, oh, okay, Flash is quite cool. Um, and it was more because in that run as well, he's kind of a mechanic and you know, try to be a normal everyday person with a family and stuff like that, rather than like, I don't know, Barry Allen almost came across as this almost too perfect guy who just like can do everything, has this perfect like job, has this perfect wife, like blonde hair, blue eyed, like, you know, like it's just, it was too much. Yeah. Um, whereas when you get this guy who's a little bit flawed, yeah, can, can screw up, can get a little bit over boosted as well. Um, See? And, and just how he connected with the Speed Force as well, like being able to do mm -hmm. things like absorb um, people's connections to get a better connection himself and stuff like that. Like in Barry's early runs, none of that was explored. Yeah. Um, so what I feel the Williamson run is, is like a really good reintroduction to Barry, but with all the Easter eggs and things that were added during Wade and John's um, Wally run mm -hmm. that Barry never had in his mythos before. So then that sets you up for modern Wally and they, they fit together because if you only know old school Barry, he doesn't really fit with modern Wally because he can't do all the weird speared force things that Wally can. And if he just copies them with no backstory to it, it doesn't make sense. You can't just go, oh, he's the first flash, therefore he can do it. Like that doesn't you know, work. Um, so it's cool when they, they did that. And one of the really cool things in the Williamson run, which I never noticed until I actually watched an interview with him, was that he gave each of the flashes a different colored lightning to indicate how connected to the speed force they are and how fast they are. So the new Wally gets red because he's the least connected. Barry gets yellow because he generates the speed force and Wally gets white or like a really light gold um, because he has the ultimate connection and can drain and connect the speed force to anything. That's really cool. Yeah. I didn't know so, that. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a lot of things. That's the thing. I I'm only starting off to get into the Flash, and it's even like you mentioned the Jeff Johns, and I haven't read that. Uh, uh, my my introduction more to like Wally West was the stuff we mentioned mm -hmm. earlier on Heroes in Crisis. Flash the two new, well, there's three new omnibuses, but you only really need the two because the third one's kind of like leading up to Flashpoint. But the the, the two reprint omnibuses are so good. But the, I've the got problem. The problem I had with Barry Allen, it's similar to what you're saying, like everything, he was just, he was like too good and too clean it's like or Superman something. Superman for me sometimes, so, it's just too perfect. It made his kind of, he has quippy moments, uh, obviously when he's in the suit and he's fighting or whatever, it didn't fit with the character mm. of Barry Allen because like, you're not that, that's not what you are. So Wally West had that, he was obviously a bit younger, um, as you say, a lot of flaws and things like that. So as the reader, you're getting, it, it, it makes more sense, the things he comes off with. Or something with Barry Allen that just didn't fit well with me. I didn't like it. Didn't... Barry's also got this idol about him, though. Even for Wally, Wally's looked up to Barry. Yeah. Um, I think that's for a lot of these like first characters in anything. Like uh, even if people have their own mantle, and I love a lot of like what would be considered the sort of secondary characters or the titans within kind of the the era of, of things. But Nightwing can be Nightwing because Batman's in the limelight. You know, even yeah. if Batman was to die and Nightwing was to take his place as Nightwing, he, he will never have the pressure that Batman has because he's he didn't create that, mm -hmm. even if he is in the cowl. Um, so it's the same with Wally taking over from, from Barry. Like, in some ways, he can have more fun with it because he's not this god that people are looking to to be perfect. He can be fallible in a way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I can't help but I do like Barry, but I have to admit my connection to Barry goes from my first introduction to Flash was watching the Wesley John ship 90s mm. Flash when I was a kid. So I've just had that connection to that character. Mm. Obviously, like many of us, we've watched uh, 
Justice League Unlimited and stuff like that. So we've seen Wally as Flash. So I, I, I like both of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I said I really like by in the Williamson run. I think he was done really well in in the in the Williamson run, and it kind of sets him up to be almost Wally's mentor in a way, um, more than just like the last Flash. And you um, say about the third volume of John's run, I did yes. get the third volume because it's the only way you can get the twelve issue uh, build up to Flashpoint, which was mm-hmm. his, which was a twelve issue series. In oversized hardcover, uh, oversized. Yeah, because there was there was like there was only there was three little runs that they put in there. They put in like I think it was like the original like Wild Wests or something run. There's like a little bit with like um, I forget something else into like the future type stuff, and then there's a lead up to Flashpoint, and yeah, some there's like there's like a rogues little arc in there as well. I think if I remember correctly, and um, like maybe spotlighting one or two of the rogues, but it feels more like a collection of stuff leading up to flashpoint then the first two omnibus are like one complete story like as a oh, as a flowing yeah. kind of story because i've got the flashpoint omnibus as well mm-hmm. it's nice they collected it because the first time around they didn't the first time the first three omnibuses were printed it only collected what's in the first two omnibuses so this yeah. third one is new content as far as oversized well this is why i'm quite happy because starting from that first john's omnibus it takes you right up beyond flashpoint mm-hmm. so it takes you into the new 52 and then you've got the uh, the Manipole, French mm-hmm. Manipole omnibus that kicks us yeah. straight off. It's just a shame we've got nothing past the Manipole run. Yeah, so you only got the first the half end. of that run. Yeah, yeah we're missing yeah. the back end of the Flash from New Fifty Two, and then we've got but nothing. It, for personally, I wasn't a big fan of that whole introducing the new Wallace West stuff. So I, I would, I would quite happily skip New Fifty Two and go straight to Rebirth with the Flash. As a, for a Flash completionist, though, I, I want it all. I've got them in trades. I have all Flash, oh, yeah. Flash in trades. I want them all. But then, do you have all the time stuff? Do you have like Heroes in Crisis and Flash Forward and all that stuff? Then, yeah, so, yeah, okay. yeah. Scott is he's not, not asking for much. He's like, if someone could give him the Flashpoint Omni, that would be great. <laughs> and do you I'll have any input? Where you can do you buy have it. any impulse stuff? No, I, I stayed away from the impulse trade that they brought out because it was just like a one off and then they weren't going to continue it. And I didn't want to pick up it's my one tiny worry with them doing this um wade on these is that they won't include the Grant Morrison bit in the middle. I have the trade for that. I just I just hope they just include it in the omnis. I hope they do because then I can let the trade go. But um because it'd be yeah. so annoying to have like five omnibus and one little trade in the middle for Grant Morrison. Yes, Scott, I am missing volume twelve. It is hard to get hold of. Uh, I'm just praying to God that we're going to get uh, Joshua Williamson's running omnibus. So. We're bound to. I I would suggest like once Stacey, Stacey get their act together, that would be one of the first ones they would do. They should finish the deluxe editions. I have three of them. Is there five in total? I don't know how many it would take, but well, the Flash there'd be loads because he goes up to sort of ninety something issues. Yeah. Ninety issues. It's like twelve, thirteen trades, something like that. No, what trade are you on? 16. 16. So 15, um, 15 trades of like four issues of trades. Yeah. That's like not, 50 issues or so, right? I'm not sure what number, because they're, they're, back, they're back to legacy number and on the, on the trade paperbacks. Yeah. So I'm not really sure. I reckon they could probably do it in another three to four hardcovers if they were to do the deluxes to finish it off. But they still haven't um, finished Tom King deluxe editions of Batman. They're so far behind. I thought maybe, they they, maybe they've just recently finished it, but they're so far I behind. Th- I thought they changed the spine for like the third time, but still yeah. finished it. Oh, it's just um... because he was the only one that got his run finished. Everybody yeah, else was. has got cut off. Yeah, they were literally they were begged to release that, wouldn't they? And they released yeah. it. But it just seems like such a kick in the teeth to the Green Arrow fans and the Flash fans who started the mm-hmm. runs and deluxes. And I would have bought all that because I've not I've finished. just finished all the trades. I've bought all the trades for um, the. Williamson Green Arrow run because I'm just I'm not hopeful I'm going to get an omnibus anytime soon, and the yeah. deluxe has never got made. Well, that's my thing, and I, and I I don't want to miss out on it because as we were mentioning a little bit kind of earlier with like the um the sort of Supergirls stuff like the the New Fifty Two and things has never been given an omnibus. I'm glad I do have that in trades because I couldn't read it again. Yeah, and you yeah. would not be able to buy the trades now for a decent price. They can't. I, yeah. I started collecting mine probably about ten years ago. And as I went off comics for a little bit, I tried going back 
a few years where we almost like pick up the hobby again. I couldn't get half stuff I wanted. Red Lanterns, uh, the New Guardians run that go that go alongside the rest of the New Fifty Two. Yeah, stuff. yeah, couldn't one volume of the Blue Spain. Um. <laughs> oh god, yeah, yeah. But I'll take Blue Spains if they complete the run. Hmm? Like me, just, me, me just not having the deluxe editions. So whilst I would like you to, have, to complete your collection, I just think like I just think the omnibus to come out and I'll buy it and read it from there. Well, well, that or is if they do the omnibus to be the size of the first three hardcovers so that I don't have to buy the first omnibus. Yeah, that's true. That'll be something. But uh, maybe DC will get their act together and do that. Um, but let's not hold our breath because they have improved. Be willing to even, you know, regularly it's, release these it's hard covers. Really random what they seem to be bringing out as and when. I mean, this metal omnibus has only just come out. Scott Snyder promised on like Twitter, like what three years ago. Yeah. And the yeah. Green Lantern Corp omnibus was six or seven years ago. That was mentioned. What's a massive? Yeah, so we'll uh, get a Red Lantern omnibus in like ten years' time. See, my, my hope for DC where they're going is, because you think this or last year they focused a hell of a lot on reprints. We've got a lot of reprints of stuff that's been gone for a while. You know, Grayson. Um, Catwoman. Oh, yeah, Catwoman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and they did bring out some new stuff with the, 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 the Catwoman was the, was the first omnibus print of the Brubaker Catwoman. Um, and the New Man's Land 3 were new omnibuses. Sleeper as well, that was a reprint, wasn't it? Few months back. Sleeper was a reprint mm -hmm. under a black label, yeah. Um, they've done a few of American his, Vampire. His um, American Vampire got reprint for the first one, and the second one got its first print. Mm -hmm. I think the only um, things I can think of is like uh, that we haven't got is like the new Teen Titans, the continued reprints. Yeah, they stopped that at five for some reason, and now I'm now I'm in a weird limbo where I have one in five. No, we haven't had the Nightfall Batman Nightfall. Omnis reprinted either one, two, or three. Yeah, not for a while, no. They seem to randomly do the Nightfall ones. And uh, the only other one I know of is Gail Simone's Wonder Woman. That's not been reprinted. That was like they came out very quick. Um, yeah, they, they're weird with Gail Simone's stuff. Um, she doesn't seem to get a lot of her stuff in like collected editions. Same with Chuck Dixon, which is really weird because they're both big DC players. You would have expected her Sinister Six and her Birds of Prey and so on to have oversized, but it's not. I paid a lot of money. It's the most money I've spent on Omnibus, that one. Girls and Mines. Wonder Woman? Yeah. Yeah, it's the most I've spent on that. So I shouldn't tell you that it. I bought it, read it, and flipped it before I even knew it was out of print. <laughs> <laughs> it's still on my shelf. Um, yeah, so I, I, I bought it undercover, um, read it, and sold it. Made my review. Um, I wasn't that chuffed. So I don't think I even put the review up. Um, but I'd done all of that, and then... I think about a week later, it was everybody was like, I can't get my hands on this book. And I was like, crap, I should have kept that. <laughs> uh, like, the thing with me, again, with Gil Simone's stuff is like, I enjoy her stories, but it's not necessarily something that I'm going to come back to time and time again. So, like, I've mentioned to you guys a few times where I've read things through in trades and then I've felt the need to upgrade it to an omnibus. But then on the second read through, I've just not really justified the omnibus staying on my shelf. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, because I try to force myself to read things within about six months of buying them, so that I'm actually going through my shelf on a rotation, and it's not just building more and more stuff on my shelf. Um, I I have a lot more times where I'm like, I've read this now. I really need to kind of keep that. It's just it's just taking up space for the next thing. I just find if I really like a character, I like to own everything that is out of it. I that's just me as a as a. Collector. Yeah, you, you can get. I mean, you can get compulsive about anything, but I think that's where sometimes you almost have to make it um, deliberately staggered, and that way, like, I don't really get as as bad about it. Like, so like I say, like my Usagi stuff, like I've got random books of different sizes of of, of different kind of stuff that doesn't really match up, or like I've got. I, I was reading New Fifty Two Nightwing at the same time as I was buying the the um, the Chuck Dixon trades that that were getting reprinted, and like those runs were. You know, I don't know, like 15, 20 years apart with a whole bunch of other stuff in between them. Um, and because I just read them as two completely separate stories, not as one ongoing arc, I kind of forced myself to think of them as separate things. Mm. Because I don't want to have to have like Tomasi's trade sitting on my shelf that I know is crap. Like, why? Just to have a complete shelf? Like, what am I really getting out of that? 
it's with it's with certain characters that I feel that way that I want the complete run. I yeah, but it doesn't exist if it's rubbish, as far as I'm concerned. Like that runs now gone from my brain. <laughs> like, like, like it didn't happen. Like, like in a, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing. But we chat with Phil of comics a lot um, over the last maybe year, year or so about different things. He talks about his um, library of books and not his collection, and he's really reluctant to get rid of anything in the case he might like it down the line and so on and so forth. But him raising that question to me or that topic of like. Do you think about it as a library or do you think it was a collection actually made me go the opposite way because i was like well if it's my library if it's my things i come back to like my computer mm -hmm. games or my movies if i'm not going to come back to it i don't keep it if it's a collection that i'm trying to have 100 percent of nightwing and i'm never going to pick it up again and it's just something to show off in videos then i'll have complete collection of certain things and then just stop collecting once i've got the full collection hmm. so he actually made me think the opposite way. I was actually like, well, no, I'd, I'd much rather have an incomplete Nightwing collection and be reading other random humanoids books or whatever um, than not have that shelf space or have stuff stacking up on the floor. And Then I've always been pretty good at cleaning out things, like to the point where most people talk about their partners stopping them buying stuff. My partner questions me when I sell things <laughs> oh, wow. because I'm so active to sell and clean out stuff. She'll be like, "Don't sell this as mine. You can't touch that one, or whatever it is." You know, like you're you're right about the whole compulsive thing. Like, for example, like Spider Man. Like, I know Spider Man isn't for everyone, and not every run is good. But I feel like the compulsive need to collect to read it once. Books. I completely yeah. get you, but once you've read it, if you know there's a bad run in there, do you really want it on your shelf? But if you're that type of collection, like a collector and you've got a complete collection, you think, oh, that run there is not that great. I'm not going to read it again. Yes. If you're not in that way of being able to easily go, that's all right, I'll just throw it one side. It's not that yeah, great. Yeah. Um, knowing that it goes, I think with Marvel, yeah. I'd be okay with it because, just be honest, Marvel reprints stuff all the time. Yeah. If it's DC, you know, I'm very hesitant to let St. go of DC. See, like, I've, I bought the Dead Man Omnibus. I don't know a lot about Dead Man. Am I going to read it? Like sitting back now, I don't know. Maybe not. But do I want to let it go? Because I know I'll never get it again. DC is my biggest problem. I'm a big I mean, you can always get something in digital at some form, if, some or another. There's always a way to reread that that story. I say I completely understand if you've never read them, and you mm -hmm. want to have the complete one to read through. If you want to read that character's complete kind of story because i would argue for anybody you know that these characters are real within their universes and they have stories and they have changes and things happen and we go on that journey with them and that's why we get so annoyed when things are changed because you're changing a character who has history you know like that 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 i completely understand but in the same sense of like i'm a huge wally west fan unless i end up reading this run that phil was talking about and it corrects heroes in crisis I'm not going to own Years in Crisis on my shelf. I I know what happened. I've read it. You know, I'm not yeah. missing out on it, but I just don't need it on my shelf. What I'll say with Heroes in Crisis in that in, in this instance, I had the single issues, not the hardcover or, or, or even the trade, but I I want to go back and buy the hardcover now. So you, that's how it's important to read mm -hmm. this flash from. But as I said, like it, it's 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 all a matter of your perspective at the time, and he, and he might come back to doing that. Um, but I've never sold anything that I haven't been able to buy back or yeah. have felt that bad because, I mean, you guys, you know, know how many books are on your shelf that you've not read. Mm -hmm. So 90%. Yeah. So when one or two disappear, you've still got a hundred yeah. books to try and read through in the next the, year. That's so the kind it, of, you know, it's, it's, it's less pressure rather than more. Like that's the mindset I'm, I'm trying to get into now when it comes to, pre-ordering and buying things now like yes i would love to have it but am i really going to get around to reading it anytime soon so i don't pick it up unless i can find it cheap or cheaper i should say um set, set yourself a budget don't pay over cover all that kind of that's, all that kind that's of stuff. what it is and if i miss out on it and sort of print it will come back at some point in the line and maybe then i'll be in a position to buy it and actually read it as soon as it comes out but like these books i've got here today all 10 of them they're not going to be read this month like the four omnis, it takes me ages to read an omnibus, and like say the Spider Gwen, I can't read it until I read Spider Geddon and whatever else. So it's like I'm not going to be reading it anytime soon. 
I only grabbed that because it's going to go to print. And it was cheaper. But they can they can go around the community as well. I mean, like I sold Adam my um, Shadowland Omnibus after reading mm-hmm. it. You know, he wanted a complete collection. I only wanted to read the story once. So was that, was that sorry, Daredevil? Was that, sorry, Shadowland? Yeah, yeah, Daredevil, Daredevil Shadowland, yeah. Um, that's that's going to be and, one of my reprint lists, I think. You know, he just yeah you know, paid the postage and shipped it over to him, basically. But, you know, like, like, there's no... I, I don't see the point in... But then, see, at the end of the day, like, space is probably mm-hmm. one of my biggest factors. I'm in a limited space, and space is even more important than the money that I get back. So, so oh, I'm you know, so I'm not going to hold on to something just because it's worth something either. You know, like if if I can have the space, then the the space is worth so much more than to me than that extra forty quid I might get for holding on to a book. Yeah, I think that's a problem we all suffer with. The, uh, all of us collectors deal with the issue of space. Space is our biggest issue. I would love to own everything. I'd have no issue owning everything, but can I store it anywhere? Do, do you no. know, like um, everyone has these. Uh, like dreams, whatever. If like, what would you do if you win the lottery? Do you know the first thing I say to my wife? Like, well, if we won the lottery this week, I say, well, I'll build a house and have a separate room, like a library, top to ceiling, shelves all around, all four walls, and I would literally own every single omnibus. I would never read them all, but I would like just have them on the shelf. So if I have a little, you know, urge to read Batman or Superman or whoever, I just pick it up. That's everyone's dream, I suppose. Yeah, that's that's. But we all try and live that dream of actually winning the lottery. That's the problem. <laughs> We're trying to live that life, but not have the millions of pounds or dollars and on our pockets. And um, Larry's saying the same thing. It's another problem I have too. He almost never reads rereads. I almost never reread something, but yet I want to keep the stuff I love. I probably need some help. It is a bit of a problem that all of us have, and I'm the same. I yeah. I, I hate parting of stuff. Um, I, I do have watched on haul videos and they're good to watch, but like sometimes I think, okay, like, would I could I part with that? It's like, no, like, don't get me wrong, like, those Buffy library editions, for example, mm. they they got you a good return, yeah, but you will never be able to buy them again, so you have to know for certain that you were yeah. willing to let them go. Yeah. So, know? again, what I done there was I sold the ones that I least enjoyed first, just to kind of temper the water, see if I was willing to kind of. Do that for the value kind of thing um and i've kept the the um the angel and faith arc ones because i actually really enjoyed those so they're not going anywhere regardless of the value so you have a split up then the kind of run as such as your your... yes all the buffy named ones i've sold or are currently for sale all the angel and faith branded ones i still have Um, i just much preferred that run i felt that in the comics faith's character was the truest one to the tv show Mm-hmm. So that was the one that I enjoyed the most. So even though again, I'm missing the the season eight lead up to that story, I know it, so I can just jump in at that point. Buffy well, is not something I've read. Um, I, I think I said before many times that I love the show, and I didn't. I wasn't in the comics whenever you know these. I think it's one ones of those things in. that became a big demand thing. It's like it's like when anything sells out or goes out of print, people then start getting all this hype around it. Yeah. I must have it. I must buy it. I must, you know. And and have you read it? Do you have any fandom in it? Is it something you even like, or are you just chasing that dragon? Like, yeah. You know, like we need to sometimes just like step back and take a second. Um, you know, like like before doing certain stuff. It's why I like pre-ordering in a way that I'm not charged and I can cancel it before it comes out and I can create wish lists and I can curate those wish lists over time. Um and as I said, like all my comics are not hidden away in a in a room somewhere. Like my comic collection is actually in my living room space. I walk past it every day. I see how much spillover I have or don't have at any time. Um you know that's all to force my hand a little bit. You know, mm-hmm. like um, and more recently, like as hobbies change, you have to make space for stuff. So I sold a lot of gaming stuff to make space for, for my comic stuff. Um, you know, over the last, you know, I don't even know however many um, weeks, you know, I've been doing nothing but printing little bits of plastic, right? <laughs> um, so when you print all these random little things, they then take up all this this space. And now I'm going to have to get rid of some of my random little figures and stuff that I've got on display, which will get me back money, which is great. Uh, but there's only so much space. Um, tri- sorry, Triple G's ju- uh, jumped in. So, sorry, I'm late. Can you start again? Yeah, no problem. It's two hours, 20 minutes in, but we could just pick up. Stop. Yeah, yeah. So here's my haul. Anyway, <laughs> you missed a really good I- presentation too, Pete. So make sure you watch the rewind. 
but I do agree as I, with space. Like I've I've been a game fan, a gaming fan all my life. You know, I had my first computer, like my Sega Mega Drive, when I was four. So I've always had physical media. I still own a lot of physical media. I've got like my Mega Drive and N64 and SNES collection in the loft. Yeah. But I've now officially made that leap to digital. I don't buy a PS5 games anymore, physical ones. I literally buy digitals. And it's, it was a struggle to get there, you know. And yeah. I've had to... There it is. See, I've, I've still yeah. got my original Sonic the Hedgehog. See, I think it really depends on the experience on the system. I think definitely on Xbox and PlayStation now, um, if you can buy games that are like on a sale or whatever um, and then and then get them digital, you can save so much space. And because you don't then need the disc spinning up, making noise, the actual experience playing the game is better as well. Um, with the Switch being cartridges, that doesn't make any noise to be a cartridge. I still think it's good to be able to resell the game if you don't want it. Um, but the other two systems being discs, the disc drive is only useful for a Blu-ray drive, as far as I'm yeah. concerned, not really for a game. I, I'm trying to, to pawn off my gaming collection too, and I think I'm going the same way when it comes to the PS5. We've got the Xbox Gold that just gives us all the monthly games and do it that way. That, that's what I'm doing with the like, is it the PlayStation, what's it called now? The PS, just, just PSN or something? Yeah, but yeah, there's, yeah. Like, there's, there's like three tiers, so I have like the lowest tier, so like a few different games a month, but I, I, I'm thinking about going up to the higher tier and getting more games essentially you can play but when it comes to gaming I, I'm going to score with digital because it's just you're right you're not buying like the disc doesn't do anything it's, it's it, we've talked about it before actually it's just a download code essentially yeah um, it's just a hindrance because it makes yeah. you annoy it makes a noise you don't want it to make yeah yeah of course, like, if it was if it was like the switch car it wouldn't be so bad but it's spinning up making noises and I think that's what we'd said actually one of the streams before like if you could still buy the case with the artwork but have a card mm. in it with the, the digital code to buy the game, that'll be okay too. Um, Getting a gift physically is still nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, again, we're, we're at this point now where you can't you can't have everything. So you've, you said you've moved on your game and stuff, your comics. At what point are you going to move your comics out for your 3D printers? Uh, well, well, that's the thing. Like it, all, it, it always kind of moves around. So I was, and I think partly of why I was so interested in the 3D printer kind of side of things is 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 kind of a bit twofold. One, that I, I literally grew up being hands-on for everything so all my schooling and stuff i loved all the crafting school classes i designed things my bedside cabinet that i used to this day i built in fourth year of school um like there's lots of things that like i like doing that kind of stuff with and i started buying figures and they were getting expensive i mean like mm -hmm. even on sale my red hood figure was over 400 pounds like that statue that's not cheap um, so I'd love to have that sort of thing. I'd love to have those statues, but that's one thing I can't let myself get into. And I've only been able to figures. justify it by selling the previous ones. So I sold the previous Red Hood figure for like 150 or so. And, you know, again, it kind of pays in towards various kind of things. So this has been built up money over time, kind of the same as like comic books. I sell comics and buy nicer editions of comics. Like I'm not paying the £100 for an absolute edition first time. I'm selling the smaller editions to pay towards that. But even then, like, it's a lot of money on a shelf and it's a lot of figures and stuff that mm. some of them I absolutely love. I mean, the Starfire, the Nightwing, the Wonder Woman and the Red Hood are absolutely amazing. The Supergirl one is, eh, it's okay. The Two Birds of Prey ones are nice, but not like the best in the world. Like I've got um, Black Canadian Huntress um, and it's got a few other kind of bits and pieces, but I would quite happily skim some of the smaller ones down, get two, 300 pound back into, you know, being able to spend on other things and then have that space to display some of my uh my various bits of plastic that i'm going to be printing because i said i'm so trying nice. to trying to turn this this model um to work for this guy oh nice that looks cool um, so i'm i'm kind of playing around in cast well, stuff just now peter is asking you sent him some info on 3d printing i'm talking about spending a lot of money on figures and statues that have pete's pete's a guy who's led me down a dark path um, I made my first pre-order for a uh, one-stick scale um, statue uh, or figure. Um, it was the Lord of the Rings Aragorn, uh, which is out there this year. And unlike saving, like building money up, I've done it. I pre-ordered, paid the deposit. And I'm hoping mm -hmm. to build up the funds. So come November, December, whenever it's arriving, I'll have the funds there to, to, to you know, just pay for it without feeling guilty. Um, but it's it's a a dangerous path but pete comics 
figure statues, and now he wants to do three D printers. I mean, it gets the thing is, it, I think it gets more and more expensive. The more, I mean, especially with all the various taxes and stuff kind of going up just now. I mean, I was looking at there was like an Iron Studios Winter Soldier that they're doing, and it's like, yeah, I've seen that. It's like an eighth scale or something. Mm-hmm. It's not quite like the size of the normal kind of figures that you get, um, but it's like two hundred pounds, give or take. Um, you can get it a little bit cheaper, maybe a bit one seventy or so. Um, but I really want it because he's got the silver arm. I love the um, soldier. Um, it's like part of the Infinity War collection or something ones, and it's the only one where he's got the silver arm and cap shield, and I want it, but it's two hundred pounds. So again, I can only justify that if I sell something else. Does like, anyone want to buy a, a Buffy Library edition uh, <laughs> today? Because uh, I don't know if wants to buy. We've got a couple of Birds of Prey figures. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> See, I would um, love that Winter Soldier this, statue. This is where the three D three D printing brings a lot of that cost Soldier. down for like the crazy accessory stuff. So like for say like Pete buys a figure and you'd have to buy like a gun pack and a stand and so on and so forth. I could just print all that stuff. Yeah. Um so that, that saves me a lot of money that way. So like what I've been working on right now, and I've not actually shown anything because it was a little bit too small, is I'm trying to print a um, a full size throne from a Lord Draken so that you can sit on the shelf on a throne. Cool. Um Folks, I'm actually thinking we're we're approaching the two and a half hour mark. If anyone knows, we always hang about after the show for another two hours and just talk all sorts of stuff. So this is I'm, I'm going to have an open invite. If you want to come backstage, not live, just chat to us after. Um, send me a link or send me a message on Instagram. I'll send you a link across. But we usually continue this conversation um, again for a couple of hours after the live show. But we're kind of drifting into the kind of figures and game and stuff. So yeah, I, I did have the... one book I wanted to mention before we kind of okay. wrapping things up a little bit. Yeah. This is one that I picked up and um, I think I actually got it like second hand. Um, and it was like in the back of one of my comic shops. Um, and it's not someone that I'd heard of before. It's, it's, a, it's a creator called Daniel Reed. And I believe he's the writer and creator. And this book's called Grubby Little Smudges. It's kind of square, kind of like your... Um, a lot of these kind of um, like archaea type things mm-hmm. are a little bit kind of more squared off kind of books. Um, and it's about this this little guy who just, as I said, just looks like this weird little kind of porcelain looking kind of like little thing. Um, and he's he's imprisoned and he, he basically, um, as disgusting as this might sound, um, picks his nose to create art and creates this kind of like sculpture thing on a on a, on a door. So I'm going to try and see if I can show you the, the art page a bit better. That's the sculpture thing he creates on the door. Um, And the story kind of goes from there that people figure out that this art exists. They come and see it in this little kind of prison. And then the various kind of lords and things of the of the kind of time try and kind of capture him or get him to kind of create art. And there's a little bit of a a kind of twist in the story for him as to like what's more important, him being imprisoned or him being able to show off his art. Um, And it's it's just a really interesting, fun kind of black and white graphic novel is one thing. Um, and it's very small kind of brush stroke kind of drawn, but it adds a lot of detail and texture to the way that, mm. that things are kind of drawn. Um, I think it was released as singles cause he's got like four or five different covers on the, on the back of this. Um, but yeah, just a fun little interesting, um, kind of, because I said, not something I would have picked up had I seen it at like full price. I think it's got 14, 15 pound on the back of year, but I think I got it for like a fiver or something. Who's the um, publisher again? Sorry, who did you say was the publisher? Um, the I don't know if it says the publisher on. It's just a very unusual. Like I said, it's a very unusual. Yeah, site. it just says it just says um, grubby little smudges of filth by Daniel Reed, uh, da, 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 SLG Publishing. Okay. Um, as I said, it it looks like a lot of these kind of like mouse guard style kind of yeah, like, you know, like the smaller kind of little square books. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I picked up a book recently in my hall it was like called like something little stories or something like that's a similar kind of format to that as well and the teddy bear kind of looking one um but yeah it's, it's like i just randomly sometimes look at the back of a comic book shop they've got little kind of like reduced sections and stuff like that and just kind of pick up little things that, that stand out um and at first i was like they can't possibly be talking about him drawing with these bogeys um but actually like as the story goes on it's really interesting and it's quite heartfelt so um yeah a weird one but again an interesting one to to check out SLGs, it's on slave labor graphics. Slave labor graphics, yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, I was wondering, was it more like a European style? Uh... Yeah, so it's not larger. It's the same. Like if I 
sorry, my hands are not really the best to kind of hold things up, but it's 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 like yeah, you know, oh. actually slightly wider and slightly smaller than like a single issue. Um, so you get about the same amount of page real estate, but it's square basically. Martin, do you have any recent reads? You want to talk about? You've got nine seconds. <laughs> uh, I've been reading a lot of Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven lately, so I've been reading. Uh, one of the ones I read recently, which I posted, was Trauma Team, which I absolutely loved. I mean, is that you... comic more based on the anime or more based on the game? It's neither, based in the world. Okay. The so anime it... is the anime is set a year before the game. The game okay. is set in its own story, but then you've got the comics that are set in the city, but not a city, but separate. Separate and you follow different characters and different characters completely okay. for every single. Race. I just wonder because the, the anime piqued my interest recently, and I have yeah. played through the game despite its faults. My PC ran it okay, um, so I I, I'm loved, intrigued to check out the anime. Love the anime. Uh, see, I'm playing through the game again as we speak. I can't get away from it, um, and I'm glad playing through the books. I say Trauma Team and oh, I can't remember the name of the other one. But Trauma Team was one I really enjoyed um, because it's. It's about the it's about a member of the trauma team that with our previous team everyone was killed due to a uh, someone obviously this, this cybernetic person killed them. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to sort of if, if you don't know the, the, the terminology if you've not played the game it's hard to explain. Um, but someone that went sort of cyber psychosis on them killed the rest of the team but her it's her going back in with another trauma team. And the person that the trauma team has to save is the person that killed her previous team. Okay. So she has to sort of, it's a decision of putting her emotions against what her job is. So it's, you get that fight all the way through the book. Okay. And then you also, it's, it's such a, it's such a good read. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, I, I, I love RPG type games. I love like almost writing my own story into stuff. So like, when I was playing the game through, I, I kind of set two two rules, and they were not set at the start of the game. I usually choose it as I kind of go through the game. So the first thing was that she she got asked to have like a drink or a smoke or something early on in the game and started choking. I didn't know at this point like what cybernetic things my character had or didn't have, um, and she started choking. And I was like, right, okay, my character is not smoking or drinking for the rest of the game. So okay. for the rest of the game, whenever anyone asked, I just said no, and it was they always found it weird because I was just like, no, that. I don't want that. Because um, I was like, no, my character doesn't drink or smoke because it doesn't doesn't work for my for for my character. Um, and and the, the second thing I did was at one point somebody who was supposed to help me had put me into like a machine or something. And when I'm waking up, I could hear them talking as if they were going to backstab me or kill me. And um, so I woke up, grabbed my gun, shot them, blew up the whole place, took them all out. And um, even though they didn't try, didn't kill me because they talked about trying to take me down. So then I set the rule again. If anyone tries to backstab me, they die. Um, and that was my two rules throughout the game. No smoking and drinking and any backstabbers die. And it made the game so fun. <laughs> I mean, if, anybody wants, if anybody wants to read any of the cyberpunk stuff, if you've not if you've not got the time or patience to play through the game to get experience the universe, the anime is a good segue into it. Um, which I do feel you need a little bit of knowledge before you read the books. You need to either play the game or play the anime or watch the anime. The anime I think, is the yeah, especially knowing like how they connect to the world and how they can kind of put certain elements and stuff. It's nice to know. Uh, what other the anime is on my watch list. Uh, sorry. And I did harass Dark Horse a little bit um, after I read Trauma Team. And I asked them for a library edition. And all they responded to me was watch the new no, like the new releases. Watch they the have space. announced. Yeah, yeah. They nice. have announced coming mm -hmm. out in October, library edition volume one with Trauma Team in it. Um, and and is it an ongoing thing where there'll be more? It's a volume one. So, yes, I'm so happy that I can get it in library edition nice. eventually. But yeah, for anyone that's interested in your sort of, you know, your cyberpunk type world, cyber enhancements, you know, drink drugs, that sort of stuff, that's sort of, you know, that's the sort of world it is. Give it a try. Yeah. I'm not necessarily into the cyber stuff all the time, but I do like like separate worlds in a story that you can just kind of follow that that story. Um so I love things like, you know, like Transmetropolitan or you know, low or anything that's like it's in its own little kind of universe of what it wants to to kind of do. Um well cool. I think if you've enjoyed the game or you've in, and you've enjoyed the anime and you like the world, the setting, I think you'll enjoy the books. Yeah. How is the art? Is it like is it like neon or are we talking like toned down? I can show you before we end up. I can show you. I what think 
the trade paperback might have been out this week or next, but you might as well just wait till the library dish. I've got it on digital. Yeah, I'll probably just wait for the library because libraries are good price. They're like 30 quid or so normally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's good. It's to say, this yeah, that's nice. it's, very, yeah. it's very Phil. You'd like all the... Yeah. It, it, it the looks a little bit like... Almost like Dan Moore's art, a little bit almost like the way the faces were in the, the pages. This here. is this is probably one of the. This is a bit gory. This huge trigger. Try and stay away from some of the trigger warning pages. But <laughs> it is, it's yeah, very. Like, this is one of the nicer books, and I think yeah, it's a little bit more curved than Dan. Dan Moore's stuff's a little bit more like straight liney. Yeah, yeah. The other one is you have my word, which is and, and they're only four issue runs. Yeah. So they're they're quick reads, but I say every single book. He's got his own characters that lead the way in Night City, and yeah, I think, I think I one think of them I'm a bit funny with. But that that library edition, that's something I'm gonna eye up then for October. Did you say? Yeah. Okay, I might I might try and have that. Yep. But folks, that that I'll just end this end this stream here. Uh, thanks for everyone who's joined us live in the chat. Thanks for everyone who's been involved. Um, it's good having you on. Um, we do this, I do it for myself, to be honest. I like to have a chat and nosy about what people have been buying and reading and what's come out and so forth. Um, thank you to Scott for for uh, producing that wonderful uh, presentation, which I will hopefully learn how to edit so each month whenever we have people on. They can take their picks and I can put it on. Uh, so thanks, Scott, for that. Um, coming up in the Nerd Herd this week, this coming Wednesday live, is uh, Dave Ockersey. And it was Scott's pick, so that that's the third and final volume of the Dave saga. Um, so if you haven't read Dave and Dave Two, like like Martin here, um, <laughs> read them and obviously the third one before Wednesday show. And that's not what you thought about it. Um, Highland G had a haul last week. You'd said um, I, I take there's nothing coming at the minute with your nothing your currently because as I said, I just I I don't. I can't lift anything significantly. Um, so if I want to like hold a book up to spread it out or something, that's not really going to work. And I don't want to put out lesser content. So it might be a little while, but I'll try and still take part in like live streams and stuff. So I'm still kind of around. Yeah, excellent. Um, yeah, so thanks everyone for, for joining us. Uh, that is uh, what all the Omnifuss is about. And we will see you again at the end of March, which I think is the 31st, I believe is the last Friday in March. Let me just double check. It is. So 31st of March. Um, we'll see you then. Take care. See you next time. Bye.